views and opinions of the following show do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of News Talk 1450 WOL, Radio 1 Incorporated, or their management. All right. Y'all better wake up, wake up. I know you laying in that bed on this holiday. You're laying in the bed. It's Veterans Day. It's, you, you know, you have the radio turned on because you know C. Allen about to turn up this morning. I need you to get up, everybody. We got a lot of good stuff for you. Welcome to the C. Allen Morning Show. I need you to get up and then listen. You can go back to bed. You can go back to bed in two hours. But right now, from from uh, 10 to 12, I want you to be alert because we got some good stuff to talk about. And I want you to call in today. I know we have a lot of people home today. And this is your first time listening to the C. Allen Morning Show. So I want you to call us. Um, today, what we're talking about. Well, first of all, good morning, Andre. Good morning, C. Allen. Good morning, C. Allen. How you doing this morning, sir? You look like you're a little under the weather, but you He's looking so good, fake. man. He's so fake this morning. <laughs> He's so fake, everybody. Don't get me started on Arm Ray. We're going to talk about him in a minute. We're going to talk about but listen, you, too, how you did last Okay, night. we're very good. We're going to talk about that. First, if, if you're just tuning in for the first time, uh, and you know this is uh, uh, 1450 AM WOL, it is talk radio. But every Monday from 10 until noon, we like to talk beauty business. We like to talk barbering business. We like to talk about fashion, education, uh, life skills. Last week, we talked about, and Alonzo, you missed it last week. Last week, it was really off the chain. We talked about what is holding you back from living your best life now. That was good. It was so good that the tech over there had to get on the air and tell her three things that she had written down on what is holding you back from living your best life. Do you know, Andre, I asked every client, every person that I saw on last week, I asked them that question. Some of them evoked tears. Some of them had really good intimate conversation about what is really holding us back. I didn't ask them what's holding black people, what's holding people. I want to know what is holding you back from living your best life now. And that was really good because it made people tap into the inner inner self-being to figure out what was going on. Today, one of my favorite topics, we do it two or three times a year. And we always do it around this time of the year because of the holidays. And that is, should you tip your barber or stylist? If so, how much? I want you to call me, 1-800-450-7876, 1-800-450-7876. I want to know, should you tip your barber, stylist, or makeup artist? Should you tip them? And if so, how much? I want to hear from you this morning. In the meantime, we're going to move on. And we're going to talk about last night. Last night, we had uh, the Derek J. from Real Housewife of Atlanta. Uh, they're actually at the Bennett Career Institute right now. But last night, they were there. Uh, him along with celebrity artist Janelle Seely Smith. And what they did was Janelle did her, uh, she did her weave and she did it she did a full weave and she did it in 10 minutes 17 seconds yes wow. yeah that was big I, I mean i sat there and watched and i couldn't even believe it but she did that thing and then once it was all done she uh she uh curled it she used those titanium red pro uh flat, yes flat irons, and it was it was wonderful i she need did a you great job. i need you to go to the Chet Beauty King Bennett on Facebook and look at the images of what she did. She did a fantastic job. 10 minutes, 17 seconds. It was really, really off the hook. Mm -hmm. Janelle Silly Smith and Derek J from Real Housewives mm -hmm. of Atlanta, what he did was he took the uh, a, a new technique that they have from Red Pro as a wig styler. And, and and I know a lot. I got a lot of seniors listening, and you know, you trying to figure out what to do with that wig. Where well, there's a wig styler that can show you how to flat. You can flat iron it, and you can curl the wig just as if it is your hair. It is unbelievable. And he gave some great tips on um, you know different ways to maintain uh, your your wig or your weave or you know different synthetic hairs and stuff like that so it was it was really nice i mean he 
He was really informative and he, he was, was a lot of fun. Well, yeah. first of all, he was much better than he was the first time he came. Put it that way, because last year when he came to the reunion show, to me was little on he was little on the dry side. But last night he was hilarious. Yeah, he was funny. He was time. hilarious last night. So listen, and I and I did see some of our listeners out there. So for those of you who were out there, and uh, I just wanted to say thank you for listening to not only the Seattle Morning Show, but they're paying attention and coming out, and I hope that you really, really enjoyed yourself. Now, today at the Bennett Career Institute, 700 Monroe Street, you know today's a holiday, uh, and we're going to salute our veterans a little later on the show. Today's a holiday, and so there's not a lot of traffic out there. You owe it to yourself to go to 700 Monroe Street, northeast at the Bennett Career Institute. They're there right now doing classes. What I want you to stop by today because they have, they're selling their Red Pro Titanium Flat Irons and the wands, the wands, what I was telling you about, the Weak Styler, all kinds of hair magazines and DVDs, and some keratin ha healthy hair products by Janelle. So if you are listening to me, get in your car, drive, o turn on 1450 AM WOL, keep listening. Go over to the Bennett Career Institute. When you go to Bennett Career Institute, you can hear me all through the building. Go over to the Bennett Career Institute. Still listen to me while you're at that table, especially if you are a wig wearer. If you know a wig wearer, and I'm talking about you, sweetheart, who's sitting there right now with all your wigs sitting on the table. You don't have them on the headstand. You got your wig, your wigs in the top drawer. You got them sitting on the table. You pull them out and you do it and you put a little brush to them. Uh-uh, sweetheart. We finally have something for you for your wig. So, Grandma, go ahead and call Metro Access right now. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm And get over to the Bennett Career Institute. Seven. I said it, Metro Access. You like that one? And get over I to like that one. Yeah. <laughs> And get over to, and you know what? Like my mother said, you keep living, you live long, yep. keep on living. Let your access may have to come to your door. Praise mm. the Lord. So we not we listen. We not to, we love Metro Access because they bring us our clients. So praise the Lord, and also my cousin Frida. Oh, oh, sorry, Lily. Wait a minute, lady. <laughs> All right, everyone. So listen, seven hundred Monroe Street, uh, Northeast Washington D.C. The Bennett Career Institute. Go there now. Go there now. In the meantime, I want you to call me because we're talking about should you tip your barber, stylist, or makeup artist, and if so, how much? Also, all right, now, what was your thought on last night? Don't forget, 700 Monroe Street, everybody. All right, last night, you know, I mean, I, I had it from another perspective because um, not only am I a barber, but I'm also a uh, part-time DJ, so if anybody needs some DJ service, you know, just give me a phone call, you know. But anyway, um, I, you know, I do it regularly for the school. A part-time so, DJ service, first of all, you need to be up to date if you're going to be a DJ. Oh, that's, see, that's what I need to talk about. See, don't okay, try to, don't, co don't come for me, C. Allen, because see, it's, it's my turn to talk about how Mr. C. Allen always want to be partying every time we have an event. That's we right. can't just play regular music. We got to be playing first club of all, and stripper music. In first order for of him all, Alonzo, his regular music is, um, um, what was that you was playing last night? It was a slow Fantasia. It was a boys when to I, men. I played it when was, I see you by Fantasia, no, which is not no, slow. No, no, he was doing Tony Terry and all of that. And but, the only thing I'm saying is, is that if you got a crowd. With the majority of the crowd is between 18 and 24, and then we had our wonderful seasoned listeners from the Seattle Morning Show that was emerged in there. You got to turn that thing up. He had to tell us something. He, matter of fact, he playing the morning show. Wake up, everybody, no more sleeping in bed. Now, I come said, on, Seattle. Come on, I, now. I, I kept on doing like this. I said, can I get some? Can I get something? He always want to dance and sweat. We go somewhere. God. We want to excite the people. Listen, everybody, we're going to take a commercial break, but I want you to call me. Today's show, should I tip my barber or stylist? And if so, how much? 
I want to hear from you, 1-800-450-7876. And see, Alan, if, if there's anybody out there who was at the event last night that is awake, that is willing to uh, call in, tell me what you thought about my music selection, too, because I got a problem with what see, Alan said. 1-800-450-7876. <laughs> I say he must be living under a rock somewhere. Nobody <laughs> listens to that kind of music. But anyway, we have new listeners today, so we let's try to keep it a little more professional. We're going to go yes, to sir, commercial yes, break. When we come back, I want to hear from you, so start calling me now, 1-800-450-7876. We're talking about should you tip your barber or stylist, and if so, how much? I want to hear from you when we come back from commercial. This is the Sea Island Morning Show. Should you tip your barber or stylist? Let me hear from you, 1-800-450-7876. News updates on the web at WOLDCnews.com. Good morning. This WOL traffic update is brought to you by UPS on westbound 450 in Prince George's County at 193. It's emergency road work blocking one right lane right now, northbound 210 after Palmer Road before Kirby Hill Road. It was construction in the right lane slowing you down briefly. Still good on the Beltway, no delays there on the Baltimore Washington Parkway, Route 5095, all moving smoothly. UPS is hiring driver helpers throughout Northern Virginia. No license needed, work days, varying hours close to home. Apply now at upsjobs.com, equal opportunity employer. Now your WOL weather forecast brought to you by Advil Cold and Sinus. For today, clouds and sun, a high near 58. Tonight, a chance of a shower down to 37. Tomorrow, early rain and then just becoming cloudy, a high near 41. Advil cold and sinus, the only cold medicine that delivers a one-two punch of pain and sinus pressure with Advil Plus, a powerful nasal decongestion in a single pill. Find it at the pharmacy counter. Use as directed. Steve Rochorn for Newstalk 1450 WOL, where information is power. Morning, gentlemen. Want to hear our specials? Sure. First, we have the seafood special. It's been sitting around here for a week. We're known around these parts for our food poisoning. Wouldn't it be great if you could be warned of life's risks? If you have diabetes, you can. It's called A1C, a simple blood test that can help measure your risk of complications from diabetes. To find out more, go to www.diabetesa1c.org. Brought to you by the American Diabetes Association, Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation International, and the Ad Council. They say America is a land of opportunity. But for some of us, it's not so easy. Today, one out of every six children in America lives in poverty. Where every day is hard. And there's never enough. But we don't want a handout. We want a way out. This is America. Together, we can do so much. Will you help? Nearly 13 million children live in poverty. Make a difference. Go to PovertyUSA.org and get involved. A message from the Catholic Campaign for Human Development. News updates on the web at WOLDCnews.com. All right, everyone, we're back here live. Today we're talking about should you tip your barber or your stylist? Should you tip your barber or your stylist? I want you to give me a call, 1-800-450-7876. It's a holiday. Get out the bed and give me a call. The lines are ringing now. Let's go to line one. Alan, Alan, good morning. Welcome to the Sea Island Morning Show. Hey, good morning. How you doing, Alan? I'm doing absolutely awesome. Talk to me. Should you tip your barber or stylist? If so, how much? Uh, I think it depends. Uh, if you have a reasonable barber, I would say haircuts probably within the range of about $15 to $20. Then, yeah, you can throw them a couple extra dollars. But I would say if you got some of these barbers in the city that have jacked their prices up to about $25 a cut, then they've already included their tip. So I would say no. When you say a couple of dollars, what do you mean? When you when you said a couple of dollars as far as the tip, what what are you saying? How much? Well, I can only I can only go by I would say haircut. Haircuts I normally throw them like about five dollars extra. Oh okay. Now so yeah. then, but if you but if the haircut was twenty five, you're not going to throw five dollars. No, I'm not. Um, because I think you know a lot of times these barbers are already adding in their tip. I mean the price is, is so high. Uh, for example. I go to uh, a barber shop over in uh, uh, Langley Park. They give me a cut for I say about fifteen dollars, and then I throw her about five dollars extra. And then I go up to Northeast, right up the street from my house over there in Brooklyn, and they want to charge about twenty five dollars a cut. Well, when I go to that barber shop, I mean I feel as though you've already included your tip. 
why am I paying you thirty dollars for just a regular cut? The same cut I would get that right down the street in uh, Hodgeville. Gotcha. All right. So next time you go to Brooklyn, stop at seven hundred Monroe Street to the Benicar Institute and get you a five dollar haircut. Okay, Alan. You said that <laughs> one. I didn't know we had those that cheap no more. <laughs> Five dollar haircut at the school. You guaranteed not to go out there unsatisfied. All right. And then you can leave a ten dollar tip. Then you can leave a ten dollar tip. <laughs> um, Ray, be quiet. All right, Alan. Thank you so much. All right, let's go to Yvonne. Yvonne, welcome yeah, good, to the. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I am doing awesome. Today we're talking about should you tip your barber or stylist or makeup artist? If so, how much? Talk to me, Yvonne. Okay, I'm a senior citizen. And I always tip my stylist and my shampoo girl. But number one, my hair is, I, I, and I need to come to your shop because my hair is so fine. My hair, my hair is fine, and I have a mix of gray, uh, gray up front and, and, and brown in the back. Mm-hmm. And they seem like they just don't know what to do with my hair. And when you try to explain to them your hair, so a person should know their own hair, right? That's right. So we know our own hair. That's right. Then they want to put all this hot pressing on it. It's already thin. It's already soft. And mm-hmm. then they want to put all these little teeny curls on it. I mm. ain't trying to look like an old woman. A- 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 exactly, <laughs> Yvonne. You're talking like my mother now. That's right. <laughs> okay. So wait a minute, Yvonne. Let me ask you this question. Okay. So how do you normally wear your hair? Well, I'm going to tell you. Back in the day, well, a couple of years ago, I used to wear my hair. I don't get, okay, now I don't get turned. Okay. But I, I understand that you can still wear a bob. Mm-hmm. I understand. Can you without a perm? If your hair nice and soft? Um, a bush bomb. A bush bomb. <laughs> no, I said exactly a bush bomb. What happens is that because your hair is so fine, that's why I wanted to know how do you wear your hair because you oftentimes may have limited things that you can do your hair because after a day or two, you know, things may differ because it's so fine. So, right. so, so how do you normally wear it? Okay, I normally get it blow dry. I get it washed. Last time a girl, she washed it, blow dried it. The man blow dried it uh, to the bone. Then she pressed it. Then she curled it. And then my curls, it, my head didn't last for over two days. But mm-hmm. I always come home and pin curl it. Okay. So then this is what you need to do. I must know I need to find your shop. No, we come to the school, Yvonne, because everything is half off. Come to the Benicare Institute at 700 Monroe Street, Northeast. Okay. And then what you do is tell the ladies that you want it pin curl. And we can pin curl your hair so you don't have to go home and do it. And everything is half off. No, I don't want her to pin curl it. What do you mean pin curl? I do pin, curl. Uh, I do pin curls to go to bed at night. Oh, okay. I got That's you. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, no problem. Well, come to 700 Monroe Street, the Benicare Institute. Somebody to do it. We'll, we'll, we'll take good care of you. We love our seniors at Ben and Korea. Okay, Yvonne? Okay. Now, where is my How to get to my room? Okay, it's off of Michigan Avenue, okay? Off of Michigan Avenue? Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank Have, you so uh-huh. much for your time. No problem. Okay, bye-bye. All right, everyone. Today, we're talking about, and I'm waiting for you to call me, 1-800-450-7876. We're talking about should you tip your barber or stylist, and if so, how much? While we're waiting for you to call us, 1-800-450-7876, we have on the line, and we're so excited to have Marion Randall on the line from Washington Hospital Center. And let me tell you all something. Every year, the Bennett Career Institute, we're dedicated. I lost my father uh, from cancer, and we're dedicated to working with the Washington Hospital Center Cancer Institute because they're right in the neighborhood of where the school is and that is also where my primary physician is. And I met a wonderful lady, Miriam Randall, who does everything that she can to work with women who have various uh, forms of cancer and going through chemotherapy and all of that. I have her on the line today because this coming Sunday, we're doing a fashion hair show at the Bennett Career Institute. The tickets are only $10, and all the proceeds go to Washington Hospital Center as uh, for their Cancer Institute. And then we like to take just a small portion of that, and we make wigs so we can have a pamper day for them, uh, for the patients right during the holiday season. Good, mor- good morning, Miriam. Good morning, Mr. Bennett. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing absolutely awesome. It is such a pleasure 
for you to have called in this morning. You know, I take my hat off to the wonderful things that you do. You. I want you to share with our listening audience what what is the Washington Hospital Cancer Institute? What is your role there, and how we can help those women? Talk to me, Marion. Okay. Um, first of all, it's the Metro Washington Hospital Center. And I am the coordinator for the Images program there. And the Images program involves helping the ladies get back to feeling the way they used to feel and looking the way that they used to look. As a part of that process, we have an Images Center that the hospital has graciously built. And we provide patients um, with wigs, hats, scarves, and turbans. And also we can actually do the fittings there because it is in the privacy, you know, of the patient's, you know, respect that they have the privacy while they're getting their wig fittings and doing what they need to do. And we also have um, a breast prosthesis fitter that comes in on Thursdays to do the um, fittings for ladies who have had mastectomies and need the, um, you know, the uh, alternatives for their care. I, and, I, and I think that's awesome. Now talk to me about the relationship that MedStar, Washington Hospital Center, the Cancer Institute, have with the Bennett Career Institute? Well, it dates back several years. I can remember when I first started at the MedStar Washington Hospital Center about 15 years ago, and we developed a really good working relationship. And through the years, you have been so gracious and so kind in opening up your practice to do free wig fittings, um, donations to the images program at the MedStar Washington Hospital Center, You've provided lunch, you've done fashion shows, and your students and the um, instructors as well as the staff has been so gracious and putting all of this together for several years. It's most appreciated, and the patients are looking forward to having another day of pampering. And I, and, and when I tell you, I tell you, and, and this is the truth, I was, I believe that God gave me the 3W Project, Wigs for Wonderful Women. The reason why I came up with that is because I was working with the, um, I was working with the Red Cross and the Look Good, Feel Better program. And the Look Good, Feel Better program, unfortunately, most of those wigs did not work with African American women. A lot of those wigs were red wigs, um, they were blonde, brunette, auburn, all those kind of colors that didn't work for African Americans. And and when we tried to adorn them, it just it wasn't a good fit. And the women knew it wasn't a good fit just because they were going through chemotherapy and having the difficulty of dealing with cancer. They didn't lose their mind. They know how they look. Right. And and a lot of them said to me that they didn't want to keep wearing hats and they didn't want to keep wearing scarves. They wanted their hair. And to an African-American woman, especially, her hair is her crown and glory. So once I left there, I said, well, this isn't right. I, I don't I don't like the, how this looked. So I created the 3W Project, Wigs for Wonderful Women. And it started, it dated, uh, and she's right, it dated way back when I was on Rhode Island Avenue. Right. And I started then, and I was on, and I've been at uh, the Bennett Career, 700 Monroe Street, for nine years now. So it was well over ten years that we started with Mary Randall uh, doing the uh, Weeks for Wonderful Women, and it has been a true success. Now we're going to give you the number where you can call the Bennett Career Institute and get you some tickets. If you don't want to get some tickets, we want you to at least donate. Donate the tickets only ten dollars. Right. Donate ten or twenty dollars so we can turn it right over to the Washington Hospital Center. Now, then tell us we did something a little different last year, Miriam. I hope you can remember. Tell our I listeners do. what the Bennett <laughs> Career Institute did last year with those proceeds because a lot of those proceeds came from our listeners on the show. So tell tell my listening audience what what the Bennett Career Institute and the Seattle Morning Show did last year for the Washington Hospital Center. Well, last year, uh, the Bennett Career Institute was instrumental in helping our patients. During this time, even though the patients were going through their cancer therapies and going through hardships at home, it was recommended and a suggestion was made that we do gift cards. The patients were very appreciative, 
it was enough gift cards to give out to, I think it was like 40 or 50. Mm -hmm. It was 40. And they were very appreciative. Um, one lady had come in and said she didn't know what she would have done because she didn't have any food to feed her family. But the little things that we as a community can do to help one another, I think we'll all come out feeling a lot better. I'm going to leave something with the, the listeners. My mom used to tell us all the time, when you receive blessings, they're not yours to keep. The other thing she used to say is, you have to give back. It's a requirement mm. that you give back to the community. It's not all about self. It's about what you can do for somebody else in the community. I tell the patients daily when I meet with them, I don't want to be on the side of the fence where you are. But I'm willing to do whatever I can to help you through the process. And you know I what? I know that it's not a pity party, that we're there to get you through the process. So that once you finish, you can go back to doing what you were doing before, but you do a better job at it. Exactly. Now, Mary, I want you to hold on to that because I want to talk about that when we come back. I want to talk okay. about your dedication because I've seen it. Everyone, listen, I want you to hold the phone, hold the line. I'm still waiting for some of you to call me at the 1-800-450-7876, our topic, should you tip? Or not. Now, we have Maria Randall on the line, Washington Hospital Center. We'll be right back with her after these messages. News updates on the web at WOLDCnews.com. Good morning, I'm Doug Parrish. Here's the latest from News1.com, brought to you in part by Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. Call 855-STUDY-77. For more info, well, it's Veterans Day here in Washington. President Obama will honor our nation's vets in a ceremony at Arlington National Cemetery. Uh, and D.C. is paying its respects. Both Mayor Vincent Gray and Delegate Eleanor Holmes Norton are honoring two of the original Tuskegee Airmen on this Veterans Day. Uh, Julie Carpenter has more. Delegate Norton's website says the service of D.C. residents William Fauntroy Jr. and Major Lewis Anderson will be commemorated at a replaying ceremony. It'll take place in D.C. at the African American Civil War Memorial. A separate indoor ceremony will honor 88-year-old Major Anderson, who will be given the Tuskegee Airmen's Congressional Gold Medal. I'm Julie Carpenter in Washington. Well, U.S. Marines are being sent to the Philippines to help a country devastated by Mother Nature. Officials in the Philippines fully expect the death toll there to reach into the thousands as it tries to recover from last week's typhoon. And the tragedy is hitting close to home for many. Mark Hayward lives in Connecticut. He says his fiance is in the Philippines for work. I was on the phone with her, and I could hear the roof banging and banging. Then you could hear pieces breaking loose. And they were hunking down and hollering to each other, feeling just helpless because I can't reach out and help her. Well, officials say the typhoon was one of the most powerful storms ever recorded. Back here at home, some good news for your wallet. Gas prices keep dropping, the slide being attributed to lower crude prices. The latest Lundberg survey puts a national average price for gas at $3.22 a gallon. And in parts of Virginia, you can now find regular unleaded at under three dollars the report brought to you in part by garmin get a garmin newbie with hd digital traffic and keep moving garmin the most trusted name in gps i'm doug parish when you're looking for news for black america go to news one.com news updates on the web at woldcnews.com oh yes all right everyone we're back here live another awesome day is veterans day here in the nation's capital and all over the world. Today, what we're talking about is we're talking about should you tip your barber or stylist. We pause for a moment. I still need you to call me 1-800-450-7876. Um, but we have Miriam Randall. I wanted to finish with her really quick. Miriam, yes. I just wanted to say that I wanted to especially uh, thank you because you are not this is not just a job for you i see your dedication i see how you go beyond the call of duty for these women i talk to the women and they tell me that if it wasn't for you you have changed their lives during this process i had a woman 
who called last year because our gracious listeners had donated money and our students. I had a woman who called last year. Um, she appeared to be a Caucasian lady, and she said when she got the gift card, she immediately started crying because she said that you had no clue that she had no food and didn't know how to get any food, and she did not want to say anything. Mm. That's the kind of stuff that I'm talking about, Miriam, about how God is using you to be the vehicle to help these women during this so such sensitive time. Right. And I just wanted to take my head off to you. I don't know if you I don't know if you get a pat on the back. I don't know if your boss tell you thank you, but I want you to know from our listeners here, we want to thank you because I've seen firsthand with my father going through I've seen it firsthand. And oftentimes you don't want a pity party or a handout. You just want to know that somebody is there. Exactly. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. Miriam, thank you so much. I do the Look at Feel Better program. I'm still doing that one for the, uh, can for the American Cancer Society. But I do it once a month now because the need is so much greater. Uh -huh. And I say to your listening audience, um, Anyone that's diagnosed with any form of cancer, especially our females, you can come to the MedStar Washington Hospital Center to utilize the services for images. Um, our services, we charge a small fee. There are provisions in place for those who cannot afford it. Please, if you have any questions, I'm willing to give up my number. It's 202-877-2273. And I look forward to hearing from all of you. All right. All right. So this is what we want to do, everyone. We're going to go. And, Marion, we thank you so much. But we're going to go to our phone lines uh, to talk about the tipping situation. But, Marion, I want you to know that on this coming Sunday, yes. um, the event, uh, we're going to find out the time. Right. Uh, and then we're going to uh, let you know. But okay. um, we definitely want to see you there. Okay. And we're going to do everything that we can to raise money, and hopefully we'll raise more this year. I need all of our listeners to call in, to call my voicemail now at the 202-526-1400, extension 19. Just give me your name and number. I'll call you back and accept any donation that you want to give us for the Washington Hospital Center. Now, some of them, if they wanted to, how would they, is it a tax write-off? How would that work, Marion? Or if they wanted to give a donation, donation, just make it out to Washington Hospital Center? Um, just um, make it out to Washington Hospital Center, MedStar Washington Hospital Center, and um, the foundation will send them a letter. Very good. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Mary, and right. we'll talk Thank about you. it before the show is over. Have a good day. Okay. You too. All right. All right, everyone, let's go to the phone lines. I need you to call me, 1-800-450-7876. We're going to start with Rita. Then after Rita, we get to Jeremy and then Siobhan. Let's start with Rita. Rita, good morning. Talk to me today. Should you tip your stylist, barber, makeup artist? If so, how much? Well, good morning, Mr. Bennett. Um, I've been an instructor for many years. I've taught everywhere from Bennett to Aveda. So and this is again. Rita Henderson. Ma'am, you haven't called yes. in the show in a long time, ma'am. It must be yes, because of the well, holiday. Go ahead. It must be, but I'll be calling <laughs> often. Uh, but one of the things I teach, and, you know, I learned very well from uh, many of you, is uh, a tip is a privilege. It's not a right. You have to earn your tips. Now, you have to ask yourself as a stylist, am I standing over top of my client talking about what me and Shaquita did at the Flaming Cave Lounge the night before? Am I allowing people to come to the say the Flaming Cave. <laughs> you know, these are the things that people look at. I'm much cave. That's what she said. She said the Flaming that Cave Lounge, absolutely. <laughs> or, you know, are you standing over top of your client with like, looking like you have Don King in a headlock because you're not properly groomed? These are the things uh, consumers mm -hmm. look at. So, you know, you have to earn that tip. You have to have standards in these salons nowadays. We have to take it back to the days when people respected our profession. Now, I believe in tipping 20% and above if the service is good. Mm, okay. But uh, always bear in mind, it is a privilege. It's not a right. Okay, Rita, I want you to hold the line because i got to ask you another question. Let's go to Jeremy on line two. Jeremy, talk to me. You heard what Rita just said. I have her on the line as well. Should you tip your barber, stylist, makeup artist? If so, how much? 
I agree with Rita completely. Well, first of all, good morning, Mr. Bennett. Good morning. Um, but like I like I said a minute ago, I, I agree with Rita completely. It's a privilege to be tipped. If you're doing a good job, then you should uh, you shouldn't expect a tip. But as a client, I'll probably give you a tip. All but right. If so you're not, if you're not paying attention to that client, then uh, or you didn't do a good job on the client, you should not expect a tip. Okay, so Jeremy, you're a barber. Rita, you're an instructor. This is my question. My question is, let's say the service was okay. Do you, I don't know who, who I don't know. I'm getting some feedback. I think that's Jeremy. Jeremy, you need to t turn that radio down off. My question. Okay, so this is my question. My question is, if it was mediocre service, if the service was okay, should you still tip? Rita? Uh... Rita. Okay. Okay. So, Jeremy, answer that question. Uh, I don't. If the if the service was okay, I would probably say no because I mean you did not give that client your full attention. You didn't. Um, it was something in, in your services that you did not do for that client. So I would say no. You should. Okay, so now what, what, what is this is my last one, and we're gonna go to Siobhan. But Jeremy, tell me then, what is your take on the fact that we have students? I'm not gonna say what school, but there's students sometimes who get an attitude when they don't get a tip. What's your advice to them? They say that they worked all day. The client was a difficult client, and she walked out the door, Mister Bitter, and she didn't give me nothing. Well, they should be happy that they got that experience because in the shop, when you when you work in the shop, you you might have that type of client that come in the shop where you did everything that you knew you were supposed to do, you did it right, they, and they still gave you a problem the whole time. Uh, they might come in. You never know what that person's problem is. As a as a barber and a stylist, you have, we forget sometimes that we also kind of like a psychologist. We get to we hear all the business and everything that's going on in people's personal lives. So it might at that time they might not be able to give a tip. They might have something else going on, and you didn't pay attention, or anything. So okay. at that time, with that, you just have to you have to take it as you go. As a student, you should you should be happy that you're learning how to deal with these type that, that type of client, and be happy that you're learning about gotcha. everything that's going on in the industry. All right, thank you, Jeremy. See, uh, I got a question. What about the the caller that just called in earlier that said? that a lot of these barbers, cosmetologists are already including their tips in the price. I mean, does that factor in? I mean, do you think that that's what's actually happening? Mm -mm. No. We're going to talk about that in a second. Rita, are you still on the line? I am. Okay, so Rita, we're going to go to Siobhan in one second. So Rita, let me ask you this. Uh, the same thing I asked Jeremy. What about a lot of times I have students, I'm not going to say what school, who would get angry and come to me and say, I did all that work on the client, I worked really hard, and she didn't give me nothing. What would you tell your student? Well, the ship has sailed on what school that is, sir, so the cat's out of that bag. But, you know, in, re in regards to that, the student has to recognize that this is a learning experience, good, bad, or indifferent. It is a learning experience. You're going to find out that in this world and in life, Everybody's not going to tip. Everybody's not built to tip. But with that being said, you have to also understand that it is a strategy to build your so-called tip into the price of your service so there's nothing lost if they do get up and walk out of the chair. A lot of people have a lot of issues, and I think for a lot of women, especially women, being beautiful is a luxury, and that may be all they be, they're able to afford. They can't tip you. But you need to understand as a stylist, it's not going to be, you know, the land of milk and honey all the time. And just take it as a learning experience. And as a student, they need to examine themselves and say, was my body language correct? You know, what, was she able to look in the mirror and see mm -hmm. me frowning at her, talking about that's her? That's right. We have to examine ourselves. Mm, and that's good, because Rita. We, that's good we because when I'm going to talk about... That's good because what I'm going to talk about after Siobhan is I'm going to talk about the customer service piece because I think that that's what people are not, it's not clicking. But thank you so much, Reed. I want you to keep listening to the show. And we do have a committee meeting on Thursday. Goodbye. Yep. All right, everybody, let's go to Siobhan. Siobhan, thank you so much for holding for so long, Siobhan. Thank you so much. Talk to me today. Today Is this your first time calling on the Seattle Morning Show? 
No, Mr. Bennett, it's not. I love this show. Okay, very good. So talk to me now. Today we're talking about should you tip your client or barber or makeup artist? If so, how much? Everybody been saying yes and no, but they've never said how much. Talk to me, Siobhan. Um, I think it goes according to your price and your demographics. Like if your price range for a regular hairstyle is 45 and your chemicals start at a 65, don't expect a $25, $30 tip. Now if you're in a high-end salon where your stuff start off at $85 up to $100 to $150, then your tip price seems to go higher because of where you're at. You have to really pay attention to your demographics. Now, everybody who sits in my chair, because I'm also a stylist here at Seattle Salon or MLK. All right. All my clients, you better shout it out. Yes, yes. And all my clients don't tip in cash. There's some people who tip in knowledge. Mm. There's some people who, from their jobs, depending on where they work at, I might get a discount card or something, or free movie tickets. So don't, uh, don't always oh, look good. for that money in your hand. Tips come from... In all types of shapes and form. The tip might even be already paying another um, appointment with you in the next two weeks. Thank you for that tip. I didn't get cash in my hands That's today, good. but I'll see you in another two weeks. Okay, Siobhan, you, got, you have to hold the line because I have a couple of questions for you. But we have to go to commercial break. Today, everyone, we're live. Siobhan from the MLK C. Allen Salon. We're talking about should you tip or not. We'll be right back after these messages. Fourteen fifty W O L. They do it every time. Good morning. This W O L traffic update is brought to you by the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine on Northbound Two Ten Indian Head Highway after Palmer Road before Kirby Hill Road. It was construction in the right lane. Whitehurst Freeway eastbound, leaving Georgetown, heading toward the center of downtown eastbound on the Whitehurst Freeway construction in the right lane which is slowing you down off the key bridge to head eastbound on the Whitehurst. If you suffer from painful diabetic neuropathy and are between the ages of 18 to 65, you may qualify for a new study testing whether diet changes can reduce your pain. Call 855-STUDY-77. Now your WOL weather forecast brought to you by Robitussin. For today, mix of clouds and sun, a high near 58. Clouds and showers overnight down to 37. Tomorrow, showers ending, becoming partly cloudy high, only near 43. Control your cough with Robitussin, the number one pharmacist recommend brand for cough, cold, and flu combinations. Don't suffer the cough sequences. Steve Hirsch, Humper News, 1450 AM WOL, where information is power. And it says here that vision loss to glaucoma can't be restored. I heard that glaucoma is the leading cause of blindness for Hispanics and African Americans. So everyone should get an eye exam at least every two years. Especially people over 60. You might have glaucoma and not even know it. Call 1-800-437-2423 for a free brochure from National Glaucoma Research. 1-800-437-2423. We inherited this business from our father. Who got it from his father? We needed an emergency preparedness plan in case of fire, cyber attack, or anything. So we went to ready.gov and got free checklists, templates, and more to be prepared. Thanks to Ready.gov, we worry less about keeping Rizzo and Sons in business. Only it should be Rizzo and Grandsons. And Granddaughter. Right. Go to Ready.gov for details on creating an emergency preparedness plan. Becoming a success is hard work. Protecting it isn't. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Homeland Security, the Ad Council, and this station. News updates on the web at WOLDCnews.com. Yes, indeed, everyone. We're back here live. The Sea Island Morning Show, sometimes I wish we had cameras in here because Andre is going to buy me. Oh, no, he can't do that. Andre is going to pay me because I'm teaching him. Siobhan, you on the line? Yes, I'm still here. Okay, we're going to get to tip in a second. I'm teaching him how to be a DJ because you didn't come to the event last night, but the event, I had to keep telling him, change the music over and over again. So I just gave him <laughs> some vital points during the break. And he's going to pay me for that in Cold Stone ice cream. I have the gift card. It's your gas, my gift card. I'm going today. Okay, and it may be a little little short. I'm going today. Okay, you you had to be at No, no, no. No, no, you got to. Okay, so Siobhan, listen, we're back here live, the Seattle Morning Show. We appreciate you so much. And uh, this is our final segment in this hour. And then the next hour, listeners, 
we're going to get into. We're still taking your calls on should you tip or uh, and how much, but we're going to get into our big celebrity beauty makeup conference in January because today is two months exactly before the date of the event. So we're going to talk about that. But right now we have Siobhan. Siobhan is one of our premier stylists at the Sea Island Signature uh, Sea Island <laughs> Salon and Spa at 2100 Martin Luther King. And when I tell you, Siobhan is one of our top stylists. She's a makeup artist. She does nails. And the great thing about Siobhan, when I tell you, a lot of you love that short, sassy haircut and hairstyle. And Siobhan is definitely the one who's able to do that. Now, Siobhan, talk to me about the tipping piece. What about, now, what is your take on, I asked you to stay on the line for a reason, because we have this misnomer about the salon in the hood that'll do you good. We have a misnomer about that if people come on the south side, the southeast, that uh, that the people aren't going to pay well. They're not going to tip at all, and uh, and we have just a bad rep about southeast salons. I need you to clear that up and talk to us about your experience when it comes to tipping, when it comes to pricing. You know, talk to me. Okay, well, when it comes to tipping and pricing here at MLK, we have all types of clientele. We have clientele that's on a, a monthly budget who still tips. We have clientele that's like um, post office um, workers, security officers, government job workers who tip well and who comes in often. So we don't discriminate. We take in all monies here at MLK. Um, salon, and then like when we need more money, let's just say things are kind of slow. We run monthly specials here to get people in our door because sometimes it's easier for people to run you sixty dollars for a quick weave is one of our specials more often wow. than eighty dollars to a hundred dollars. You get that sixty dollars a lot more often, so you have to be a business person and pay attention to your um your clientele that's coming in or when your business is slow and how you can do things to promote your business to get people to come in your door without you losing a lot of money. Okay, so let me ask you this. So now, you said that there are different kind of clientele, and so we have the, the blue-collar workers that come in. We have the people that's on the uh, the monthly specials. Do we do we have traffic that's going to, let's say, the, the Clinton, those areas that have to go through the uh, 295 area? Do you have some of those as well? Yes, we do. Okay. We do, because of our professionalism. And when someone comes into your establishment and you're showing that you're professional and that you're ready to take on that service, they don't care about where you're at. They forget where you're at. They forget about the notations about being in Southeast or MLK. Mm. I have a lot of people who are surprised. They love the inside of our salon. It's beautiful. Okay. It is. And okay, they, so then tell me about now, do you get, what, what is the biggest stereotype that you think that you come across when people, when you say to them, when you give out your card, and you give them 2100 Martin Luther King Jr. Avenue Southeast across from the big chair, when you give them that, what, what do you think the biggest negative perception that, uh, that comes your way? Um, they think that it's going to be hood and get out, like there's going to be people hanging outside Absolutely. smoking and cussing, and the ladies in here are going to be dressed ratchet with their breasts and butts hanging out. And this is a family salon. We also have two barbers inside of here. So we can do everything from the mother to the husband to your kids here. So there's a we have an air in here that we have to maintain. Okay, and and this is one of the things, and I'm so glad, and I'm doing it on purpose, of course, because I speak on the MLK Salon often, but sometimes they need to hear it because I think it's unfortunate how we have a lot of residents in Southeast that will go out to Maryland, uh, to go to Rivertown, go out to other places to get their hair done when they can stay right in their neighborhood. Just believe it, sweetie. Just because we're on t we're on Martin Luther King. Avenue number one, we're right next to the Bank of America. Bank of America has a security officer that stands outside, which means that there's not a lot of loitering. Uh, there's plenty of parking right on the outskirt and sometimes right there. Uh, plenty of parking, and then the when you walk in the door, we have ten stylists that and barbers that are ready to service you. And like Siobhan says, from the kids 
all the way to the senior citizens, men and women. It is a family salon. My thing is, and you know, I'm a church boy. I love gospel music. The Lord heard my cry. But I called over the other day. I said, if you all do not turn that Richard Smallwood down, I'm going to go crazy. <laughs> Can you please tell the manager every now and then? Can we boom, 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 it's important for everyone to know today we're talking about should you tip your stylist or barber in the salon and if so, how much? And one of the things, Siobhan, that I think is important is one of the things that I think is important is the fact that just because you are in Southeast, we still have a professional salon. We still want you to bring your Correct. tips. We still want you to come and get great service. And the thing that I love about the MLK Salon, I don't know if you know this, but we have three licensed cosmetology instructors in under one roof in the same building. There's a lot of talent in this in this salon, a lot. One roof under the same building. So that's what I'm talking about in reference to making sure that the hair is on point, making sure that uh, healthy hair, and then Siobhan is our short hair queen, I'm just going to give you the number anyway. She didn't call for this. She just called to talk about tipping. But since I hit on the line, I want you to call the. Uh, if you're off today, if you're in that neighborhood, if you work in the Martin Luther King area, if you live out in Maryland and you go past 295, or if you just would like to take a trip over there and visit the salon, it's 202-678-1009. 202-678-1009. Six seven eight one zero zero nine, and we'll give the number again at the end of the show. And I know we've been giving out a lot of numbers. We don't want to confuse anybody. But the tw the address is twenty one hundred MLK, right next to the Bank of America, two zero two six seven eight one zero zero nine. If you short hair, call Siobhan. She took time out for her busy schedule to call, even if it's not short hair. Call Siobhan. She'll able. She'll be able to take care of you. Thank you so much, Siobhan. Thank you you have so a good much, day. Mr. Bennett, you too. Thank you. All right. So, Andre, talk to me on your. You, what is your take uh, before we go into the next segment in reference to tipping? Well, I think you know as as long as I've been you know getting my hair cut. I remember my dad used to take me to the barber shop. Every time I used to get my hair cut, he would give me the the money for the um, haircut, but also the tip as well. You and, know what? Wait a minute. Pause. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That is absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. so, I, I, so maybe we need to stop and pause and talk about that for a minute. Do the parents today, parents, are you out there? Do you, when you send your son or daughter do the barber sh to the barbershop or salon, do you automatically have a few dollars for them for a tip? one 800 Four five zero seven eight seven six. Because you're absolutely right. Whenever I hated going to the barber, because my father used to say, "Cut it all off," and you know we didn't want a bald head. Because in D.C., young, you get a bald head. Everybody wanted to slap your head in school. You know what I'm saying? So I never want the bald head. Never want to take my hat off. But you're right. When we went to the barber, I can remember my father, God bless the dead, when he would take us to the barber shop. He would put a dollar in our hand. That once we finish getting, and they would say, go ahead and give them to the barber because they were training us then how to tip and how to be appreciative. 1 800 450 7876. Go ahead, Andre. I'm yeah, sorry. It's no problem. I mean, because, you know, when. That was good. The, yeah, the thing is, you know, they, my, my, my parents, just like yours, they, they taught us that anytime a person, you know, takes their time out to do a great job for you. You should you should you know go a little bit above and beyond, especially if they go above and beyond. You know, so um, my experiences at the barbershop my entire life has has been wonderful. I I'm rarely rarely have been in a situation where you know a, a person that I that cut my hair I didn't I didn't feel like they deserved a tip. So I mean, tipping to me is mandatory. I mean, not just because I'm a barber myself, but because that's the way I was trained. That's that's what I know. Um, tipping is is mandatory to me. I mean, 
what you can tip is is different. You know, sometimes you go to the shop and you can't tip because you don't have the extra. But you can best believe the next time when I come back, I'm gonna have whatever I was supposed to tip in the last time plus this tip, and you know, just just take care of my barber because he he's in control of how I mm-hmm. look on the on a day to day basis. And you know, the haircut that he gives me can make or break my situation. I can get a job or get turned down from one. But you know what? But you said something that 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 made a lot of sense. And not to cut you off, but I'm also that person that feels bad when somebody come. I like to tip everybody. I like to tip the man that's bringing the 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 the, the uh, delivery. I, I like to tip um, everyone, and sometimes I do not have it at that time. And and that just threw something at me. What? All of the stylists and barbers out there need to know is how do you know that they just don't have it? Right, they just don't and have that, it. And time. that's why, oh, oh, this is good. I want to start that. And that's why we shouldn't be expecting one. That's right. It's a difference if somebody blessed you with the tip, but you, and, and I think Rita has said it too, but you shouldn't even be expecting one. And then if you get one, praise the Lord, but don't be expecting it. That's right. Because there are times, and you're right, Andre, there are times that I have just enough to give at that point in time, but I may not have any extra. Right. And then there are times that I will come back. And give them a tip. And give them something. All right, everybody, listen, I want you to call me. 1-800, this is good. 1-800-450-7876. We got to go to break, but call me now during the break so you can be the first one to talk. Should you tip your barber or stylist, makeup artist? If so, how much? 1450 AM, WOL. We'll be back after these messages. 1450 WOL. My dad came to live with us last month, and you know, it's going pretty well. I feel like I never have time for myself. With him being around more, it really lets us catch up on things. His memory isn't what it used to be. We get up and we have coffee. He usually wakes up at 430 Then we go for a walk. He needs lots of my attention. I do need to keep an eye on his medications, though. That's important. Sometimes I feel like a pharmacist. I'd say John and the kids are adjusting pretty well. They honestly have no idea what I'm going through. It can be a little challenging. Help. But so far, so good. I could really use just a little help. For those dealing with the daily struggles of caring for a loved one, we hear you. That's why AARP created a community with experts and other caregivers for advice, tips, and support. Together, let's help each other better care for ourselves and the ones we love. Visit aarp.org slash caregiving. A public service announcement brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. Hey, parents of children with asthma, here's another hit from the Breathe Easies. Come on and clean up the mold. Clean up the mold. Mold can trigger asthma in kids young and old. Come on and clean up the mold. Clean up the mold in your house. This song may be fun, but childhood asthma is not. Preventing asthma attacks can be as simple as cleaning up the mold and mildew in your house. For more Breathe Easy tips to help stop asthma attacks, go to noattacks.org. Brought to you by the EPA and the Ad Council. African Americans are nearly twice as likely to suffer a stroke as white Americans. There are steps you can take to help beat the odds. 1-888-4-STROKE or go to strokeassociation.org. Join the power to end stroke. Brought to you by the American Stroke Association and the Ad Council. 1450 WOL, Washington, D.C. and WPRS HD2 Waldorf, Washington. A Radio 1 station and worldwide at WOLDCnews.com. The views and opinions of the following show do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of News Talk 1450 WOL, Radio 1 Incorporated, or their management. Oh, oh yes. Oh, oh, oh yes. All right, everyone. We're back here, our second hour here on the Sea Island Morning Show. If you're just tuning in, if you're just getting out that bed, because I know I sure didn't want to get out the bed this morning. My God, that bed was holding me tight. Mm-mm-mm. Anyway, today is Veterans Day. We salute our veterans. Hail to all of the people who have made it possible for us to move, to breathe, to not have to be worried in this free democracy society. Freedom so, comes with a price. Absolutely. So we thank all of those who are on the wall to make sure that we can do uh, uh, things that a lot of people can't do. That's right. Thank you for paying the price for Exactly. Us. So we got Rhonda and we got Dave on the line holding. Today, everybody, we're talking about should you tip your barber, stylist, makeup artist? If so, 
how much. I want to hear from you. 1-800-450-7876. We're about to get into the holidays. Do you tip them? What if the service is mediocre? What if they gave you a piss poor service? Do you still tip the people? I want to hear from you. All right, let's go to the phone lines. Line one, Rhonda. Rhonda, welcome to the Seattle Morning Show. Good morning, D. How are you? How are you? Good morning, Chet and Unre. Hey. All right, so talk to me now. Today we're talking about tipping. Should you tip your barber, your stylist, your esthetician, your makeup artist? Should you tip money? And if so, Rhonda, how much? You should definitely be tipping those people who give you service, but not just because they're giving you a service. It has to be, for me, it has to be an extraordinary service. You can't, you can't give Rhonda a piss poor service because I don't pay for piss poor service. I already have to pay you for doing it, but I'm not going to. A tip to me is, thank you. You did a good job. If you didn't do a good job, you don't get a tip from me. So Rhonda, let me ask and you this question. Let me ask you this question. So let's skip gears for one second. What if you were in a restaurant and a lady didn't give you, like, the best service? Do you put something or you put zero? I put zero. Oh, my God, Rhonda. Wait a minute, Rhonda. Yeah, I put zero. You don't give them anything? What did they give me? Advice. Attitude? Attitude. Okay, you had to bring the food out here anyway, but I'm expecting you to bring me my service. With a smile, I, I've worked in customer service a long time. I'm also an esthetician. I'm also a business person. I don't even like to do business with people who who aren't giving me a, a stellar service. I, I, I can't do it. I, I work just as hard for my money as they, and they're not working hard for their money. Okay, I so, Rhonda, you're in a salon. Like that, but when I do tip. When I do tip, I tip well. Like I said, I'm an esthetician as well. And like Andre said, oh, I remember those days. I grew up in Northeast, so my mom used to send me to Calvin A Beauty School every two weeks. Mm -hmm. And, yes, she used to always give me that extra money for that tip. And I felt good, even as a little girl, after paying for my service, giving that lady that tip. And my mom tipped well. So I would have money for the shampoo girl and for my stylist as well. Do you have any but, children, Rhonda? I'm sorry? Do you have any children? I do. And when my daughter used to get her hair done, when I paid for her to get her hair done, I also gave her a tip and said, go up there and get this to the shampoo girl. Yes. Go up there and get this to the lady that did your hair. That's wonderful. That's that's, that's, that's how I was. That's how I was brought up. But I think a lot of people who don't do that, maybe they weren't brought up that way. Okay. All right. Very they, good. They just, they just weren't. Um, but no, got a tip, and it has to be at, at least a decent service for gotcha. me to give you my money. Perfect. I, I just can't do it. Okay, Rhonda, we love you, and thank you. You're a wonderful friend of the show. We thank you for listening every Monday, and we want you to keep listening. Thank you so much, Rhonda. We we love you. Always a pleasure. All right. All right. Let's go to Dave on line two. Dave, is this your first time calling the Seattle Morning Show? No, nah, uh, long time listener. Okay, um, very good. Probably second time call. Yeah, I just, um, I just want to commend you for well, a, a good job you're doing in, right. the, uh, in the city. Okay, well, thank you. So talk to me, Dave. We're talking about tipping. Should you tip your barber stylist? If so, how much? Um, well, number one, it depends on if he or she does a good job. That's first of all. And uh, second of all, I would just like to say maybe... Uh, if they did do a good job, um, maybe we'll just go back according to your income. And I and I also leave you with this: a lot of you know, there's such thing as a barber and a good barber. A good barber, after he finished uh, cutting your hair, number one, he's gonna ask you, "Would you like a shampoo?" And he's also, uh, um, after he finished that, he's probably gonna ask you. Um, you know, oh, also, can I uh, get the hair out your nose and your ears? You know, that's mm. a service that most hairstylists, uh, especially barbers, don't offer their clients. That's true. They need to think about that. That's true. All right. That's true. Very good, Dave. Uh, uh, so, Dave, now, when you say according to your income, so now if a person make over 100000 they need to pay more of a tip than the person that make 25000 well, I don't see why not. They can afford to. I mean, if your haircut is twenty, they make a hundred thousand. 
maybe they should give up at least 10. And a person making about 25, maybe they, I think, uh, you know, $3, $4 is cool. Depending on how your bills is looking this month. Okay. <laughs> you can see C. Uh, Allen face right now. <laughs> you can see C. Allen face right now. <laughs> okay, Dave. Well, we appreciate you. And I'm so glad that you're a long time listener. You keep listening to the show. I, I came out to your fashion show um, last week, too. Oh, all right. Well, very. Yeah, yeah I sure did. I, I, um, a, after it was over, y'all uh, had everybody to come back out from behind the curtain. I started to run back then, come be the last one out myself. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> All right, well, David, we got another one this weekend. It's a $10 event. All the proceeds go to Washington Hospital Center Cancer Institute. So try to come back out if you want, all right? I appreciate it. All right, thank you, David. Excuse me, y'all. One thing I need to say right here, right now. One thing about them Bennett's, when they thinking something, it is so clear on their face. You should see C. Allen's face right now. <laughs> Dave said, you got to pay. <laughs> you pay like you weigh. Yes, indeed, baby. I'm not saying a word. I'm going right to Erica on line one. Mm, 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 I'm not mm. saying a word. Let's that see Dave face. said, if you make a certain amount, you need to pay. <laughs> Let's see how a little sick what he said. <laughs> Erica, talk to me this morning. Welcome to the Seattle Morning Show. Is this your first time calling? Yes, this is my first time calling, Mr. Bennett. How are you? I'm wonderful. All right, Erica, first time calling. Well, Alonzo, we sure wish we had our sounds and stuff so we can ring a bell, a button, or something. The <laughs> <laughs> first time calling. All right, Erica, talk to yes, well, yes, Yes, and good morning, Mr. Kenneth. This is Erica. Hey. Um, again, I, I, yes, I am a first time listener. I mean, a first time caller. I've listened to your show. But this particular topic is very dear to my heart and I did want to comment on it. Sure. I do believe that you should tip your stylist. However, the type of tip is important. Even if you go into a restaurant or because again, most of those people they don't make minimum wage. They really earn they base their income on the tip. However, you know, it's a percentage. So if generally you tip twenty percent, that's like the highest that means that you have exhibited exemplary above and beyond service, then I will definitely tip 20%. And sometimes if it's really exemplary, I will go be above that. However, if I get poor service, then my tip is at minimum at the most 5% because you should always tip. With my stylist, if I get in the chair and she's doing my hair and she's talking to Boo Boo, she's talking to Shanti, she's um, stop and doing my head to get text, take a text message, then her tip is not going to be that 20% or that 25%. However, I have been known to, if when I get out the chair and I really love, love my style or what she's done, she's been really creative, I will go above and beyond. But it's really all about the level of service. And I don't think as a stylist that it should be expected. But let me let me ask you a question because what you said just kind of raised a, a, a thought to me. I mean, let's say you said you know the 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 service was a little bit substandard or whatever that um you would still tip about five percent. I mean, do you not think that maybe that is saying to the stylist that I'm gonna still get a tip even if I do some stuff substandard work? I mean, it's like almost. Uh, tipping somebody or giving somebody a reward for stuff that you know for work that's not really that great. I mean, when you, I mean, is that the message that you would be sending out to the stylist? What 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 would you be telling them? Well, I think for my stylist, um, or when I use, I don't have any hair now, but when I did have a stylist, or when I go to the barber, you know, they would say, you know, I'm used to twenty percent. Why she give me five percent? You know, so it would to me it would be an incentive if I was a hairstylist and I'm not, and I know that this particular client always tips me 20% or more. I'm definitely going to shoot for my best. However, as a stylist, period, I don't think the mindset should be, oh, I'm just going to be substandard. It should always be I'm giving 110%. And when you give 110% each and every time or as much as you can, I mean, because we all have bad days. However, you should always give 110%. And when you give that, you're going to be blessed. You Absolutely. Know, you're going to be blessed. Absolutely. You're going to be blessed. So well, I don't you, think you know, Erica, 
But you know, Erica, yeah. I, I'm on Ray. I'm on the side of Erica this morning because I just feel that when I go places, I feel that if the service is okay, then I'm going to tip you an okay serve an okay tip. But what I'm saying is, if, what if it's look, just bad? Let me, finish, let me finish. If the service is okay, I'm gonna give you an okay tip. If the service is phenomenal, I'm going to give you a phenomenal tip. I'm going to tip you based on how you treated me. That's me personally. Now, in reference to if the service is bad, it depends on what you mean by bad. If the haircut is if the haircut is something that I can deal with, then I'm like Erica, I'm going to still do 5% only because it was the person's time. But one thing that's important, and I think Erica kind of talked about, it, was now if that person know me as a client, and that person know that he's not going to get his usual tip, and the tip is oh, I'm gonna give you a good example, and we got one minute. I'm gonna give you a good example. I gave Andre twenty dollars the first time he cut my hair. The second time he cut my hair, I gave him ten. Why did I give him the difference? It's because number one, Erica, I told him his hands was too he was he was very rough. I had to keep mm-hmm. telling him I have sensitive skin, I have eczema, you need to call me. it was like he was pushing the head and I was jerking and moving and all this stuff. I'm not gonna give you twenty dollars because it wasn't ex- it wasn't it wasn't the service that I'm used to. Well, I gave him fine. half that so he could understand I was trying to provoke a conversation so he could say, Oh, Oh wow! I got half the tip this time, so I could have went on. But we got to go, Erica. Erica, you know I love you to death. Thank you for calling me, and yeah, we got a committee meeting on Thursday, Erica. Committee meeting yeah, Thursday I'll night. See Thursday. I'll All right. See Thursday. All right, everyone. That was Erica Day, one of my good, good, good consultants. It's time for us to take another step away. It's fourteen fifty a.m. WOL, where information is power. Should you tip your barber or stylist? One eight hundred four five zero seven eight seven six. 1450 WOL. Good morning. This WOL traffic update is brought to you by Robitussin. Eastbound on the Whitehurst Freeway is leave the Key Bridge, leaving Georgetown heading toward downtown Washington in the direction of the Kennedy Center that way. Eastbound Whitehurst Freeway construction right at the end of the eastbound freeway near K Street and 27th Street is in the right lane. Very slow, leaving the key bridge. Prince George's County Road Work 450 westbound at 193. Still in the right lane emergency road work there. Control your cough with Robitussin, the number one pharmacist recommended brand for cough, cold, and flu combinations. Don't suffer the cough sequences. Now your WOL weather forecast brought to you by CQ. For today, a mix of sun and clouds, a high near 58. Tonight, some rain moves in down to 37. Tomorrow, rain ending and a high only near 42. Make the easy switch to CQ. Get the tools you need, like free debit cards, ditch your bank, switch to CQ, visit secumd.org, CQ, different direction. Steve Hershorn for News Talk, 1450 AM WOL, where information is power. The odds of a child becoming a professional athlete, 1 in 16,000. The odds of a child being diagnosed with autism, 1 in 150. You know the odds of autism, now learn the signs. No big smiles or other joyful expressions by six months. No back and forth sharing of sound or facial expressions by nine months. And no babbling by 12 months. To learn more of the signs, visit AutismSpeaks.org. Brought to you by Autism Speaks and the Ad Council. We inherited this business from our father. Who got it from his father? We needed an emergency preparedness plan in case of fire, cyber attack. Or anything. So we went to ready.gov and got free checklists, templates, and more to be prepared. Thanks to ready.gov, we worry less about keeping Rizzo and Sons in business. Only it should be Rizzo and Grandsons. And granddaughter. Right. Go to ready.gov for details on creating an emergency preparedness plan. Becoming a success is hard work. Protecting it isn't. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Homeland Security, the Ad Council, and this station. News Talk 1450 WOL AM, where information is power. Oh, yes. All right, everyone, we thank you so much for all of the callers that we had to call in to talk to us about should we or shouldn't we tip. Let's kind of go over some of the other things that uh, we wanted to um, get clear. First, the Washington Hospital Center Cancer Institute you heard Marion Randall talk. We've been doing it over 10 years with Washington Hospital Center. I need all of my listeners to call my extension 
uh, 202-526-1400, extension 19. I want you to give me your name and your number. One of my representatives is going to call you, probably the finance office will call you tomorrow. And we want to be able to raise money. This is the thing. We're not asking for a lot. Normally, we usually try to give them at least 1000 to 1500 every year. I told you about the lady who called me after she got her gift card last year. And one of the things I had a problem with, but that's a whole other topic, when I went into Safeway to get the gift cards, because I said I needed 40 $25 gift cards at $1,000. And the first the man said, we don't do that. Because it was the holidays, and he probably thought I was trying to pull a stunt. When I pulled that 1000 cash out from our listeners and, and our students and all of that, then he had to change your heart. I had a problem with that, but that's neither here nor there. I'm not going to get started. You know, if if you're tuning in for the first time, see Alan's very toned today. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not, yes, yes, because last week I was off the hook. I'm trying to simmer it down. I don't want to be the angry black man on the radio. So I kind of calm down. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Everybody ought to well, praise see, the Lord. Oh, oh, okay, okay. All right. So stay on track. Stay on track. Thank you. So I want all of you to call me now at the one at the two zero two five two six fourteen hundred extension nineteen. Give me your name and your phone number. I'm gonna call you between today and tomorrow, and we're going to accept whatever donation that you want to give to the Washington Hospital Center Cancer Institute. All of you will receive a letter from the foundation for your tax write-off. We like to be a blessing. I said it earlier. When we started working, making wigs, we didn't want to just do, first of all, we don't just do long wigs. A lot of our seniors and a lot of people have salt, pepper, hair. So we like to do salt, pepper wigs. We like to do short and sassy wigs. I don't know if you saw a housewife of Atlanta last night. Portia hit on a cute, short, and sassy wig. Mm. There's a... <laughs> I'm so sorry. This arm is... <laughs> so we want you to come out. We want you to call us. And also, uh, of course, for your donation, if it's at least ten dollars, what we're going to do is we're going to put a set a ticket aside for you or a loved one or anyone that would like to come out to the show on this coming Sunday. The show this coming Sunday, I believe we said that the show was going to start at like five o'clock. Mm-hmm. I believe. Find out, all right, please, while we're on the air, find out what time the show is going to be on Sunday, either Lyles or Mr. Boy next summer. But it's important that uh, all of you. Uh, If you don't want to come out, we want you to give a donation to the Washington Hospital Center Cancer Institute. And then also we're going to be talking to you about our Christmas at Berry Farms. Last year, the Bennett Career Institute on Christmas Eve went to the Berry Farms Community Center. And we did free haircuts and free hairstyles on everyone in the entire neighborhood. The C. Allen Martin Luther King Salon led that project with Trendy Lindy. And the Seattle Morning Show. And we gave every single person a toy. Every single kid. They got their hair cut. Their hair done on Christmas Eve. So it was really a phenomenal event. So these are the kind of things that we do here on the Seattle Morning Show. And the Bennett Career Institute. um, As well as the salons and spas. So it's important that you help us out here. We're not asking for a million dollars. We just want whatever you want to give to the Washington Hospital Center. Uh, Cancer Institute. If it's not, if you want to write a check, you can make that check directly made out to the Washington Hospital Center, MedStar Washington Hospital Center. But we want you to call my line, 202 526 1400, extension 19. Just give me your first, last name, and your phone number, and we'll call you and get that donation. Also, they wanted me to remind you about. The table at the Benicare Institute today. I mentioned to you how Susan from Total Media Group, uh, the the awesome Derek J from Real Housewives of Atlanta, they're at the Benicare Institute right now, and they're doing classes <laughs> at the Benicare Institute right now, and they're doing classes. And Susan wanted me to mention that they do have those items on sale today, and I think that's really important. So all of you right now, get in your car. Go to 700 Monroe Street, Northeast, 
Washington, D.C., right off of 7th and Michigan Avenue. They have those Red Pro titanium flat irons and wands, the hair magazines, educational DVDs, as well as the Jazz Keratin Healthy Hair Products. So if you're not doing anything, if you're off work today, they'll be at the Bennett Career Institute up until at least 4 or 5 o'clock. You want to stop by, but I say go now. Go now and get you. Turn on the car. Turn back on 1450. Go now to the Bennett Career Institute, 700 Monroe Street. One of the things that I liked Andre about Derek J last night, not only was he really hilarious and he was really funny, but the other thing that I liked was I liked the fact that he took that wig styler from Red Pro Kiss. He took that wig styler and he really took, this is what happened. He put a wig on a girl. Mm -hmm. set her on the main stage and he took that styler and he he straightened one side of the wig bone straight and the other side he took the styler and he put nice beautiful curls in it how many of my seniors today how many of my wonderful listeners who wear wigs have those wigs sitting there and you don't know what to do with them and it was it was it was amazing to me how how good it was that product that they're they're promoting right now those titaniums and and those flat irons was just awesome. Well, I'm gonna tell you, I have my Red Pros that I have because I think that it is now. Now, what I'm gonna do is because I know they're not listening because they're teaching class. If the listeners don't go and buy them up, I'm going to see what I can do because those will be good gifts and good presents to my stylist. Mm -hmm. And we can give some away to one or two listeners uh, during the holidays. Since they're here, I need to see what my deal would be. That's a great idea. Yeah, I need a deal. <clears throat> Cause there was all, that's some awesome product line that they got there. Because we have too many seniors who say to me, uh, uh, they come up and they talk about what can they do with their wig, and then a lot of them say this old thing and all of that. No, your wig, baby, you need to ha your wig need to be held in high esteem now. <laughs> your wig need to be held in high esteem. Listen, go by now to 700 Monroe Street Northeast and get that wig styler so you'll know how to curl. And ask them that don't you tell them I told you this. Ask them that have Derek J from Real Housewives of Atlanta. Ask them to have some people to show you real quick how to use the product on the weed. Yeah, because see, the thing is... And, then, and get a picture with them. Yeah, I know, that's <laughs> right. Because the thing is, they, you, you need to know how to use your product. And and he showed last night, you know, that he's really a professional with, with this product. And it was it was awesome. I mean, everybody was able to walk, you know, the lady was able to walk around and everybody was able to touch her hair. And, you know, see, you know, just how, how well of a job that... um that wig style did so it was it was awesome it was fun yeah it was a lot of, and listen let me just say this to our listeners because we did have some listeners there last night let me just say this listen you you owe it to yourself to take time out and do something mm -hmm. like this coming weekend and you owe it to yourself to call me not just to donate something or just buy a ticket buying a ticket is your donation come out and enjoy the show it's about seven to ten acts and what they're doing is all the students from all the classrooms are put on the presentation and all of the proceeds go to the Washington Hospital Center Med Star. We're trying to raise enough money that we can be a blessing to the cancer patients, but also so we can be able to make and create and style wigs for them, nice wigs that we will make from scratch from the Bennett Career Institute. And I think it's important that you take time out and come out and show your support because cancer doesn't have a name sure you know cancer doesn't have an age mm -mm. you know one day we're fine the next day people are stage four and they're devastated and when and when they lose their hair that's when the reality starts to set in it's one thing to know what's going on in your body but it's another thing when your hair is now missing and then you're trying to figure out what to do Please don't be in that situation that you don't know what to do. Because here at the Bennett Career Institute, we're here to help you. We're not asking. And when we do this, when we give the, the money that we raise, we give them to the clients. Those clients don't pay for these wigs that we make. No, they should Those short and sassy wigs. Mm. Those, those are, are, are sassy. Those colorful gray wigs that we make. 
you know, uh, uh, the nice, beautiful Bob wigs, all of that kind of stuff that we make. We're not charging the client. See, Alan, I, I just want to, I just want to say that you know I understand. I mean, because cancer has affected my, you know, me and my family as well. Um, my dad, you know, the same man I was telling you about who used to, you know, take me to go tip the barber. You know, his hair was it was everything to him. And, um, you know, when he was diagnosed with cancer, you know, he had lung cancer. And, um, you know, we, we're we still fighting him right now to this day. But, you know, it took all his hair and it was just the biggest thing. That was that was a, one of the biggest blows to him and his um you know his his mindset. Because Absolutely, it, it just you know it destroyed. I'm him. telling you, when we do the three W project, not only do we put a wig on them, but we feed them, we pamper them, we give them a light manicure, we give them we give them makeup artistry. Uh, uh, we put the wig on them. We measure the wig. We tighten the wig. We we make sure that the wig fit. It's a custom wig, and then we do a complete service. Many of them they don't have eyebrows, so we give them eye. We give them lashes, and we just make them look really pretty. We want you to call us now. We're about to go to break, but it's two zero two five two six fourteen hundred extension nineteen. When I come to work today, I want that inbox to be full of people that's either buying a ten dollar ticket or make it a ten dollar or whatever donation and the donation you will get a form from the foundation MedStar Washington Hospital Center but it's time that we make a difference first of all we do a whole lot of talking and no action mm -hmm. or we love to listen to the show we love to call in but when it's time to do your part will you stay in what is ten dollars you don't have to come to the show but just give ten dollars so we can be a blessing. All right, I'm not going to beg nobody. It's break time here on the Sea Island Morning Show, 1450 AM WOL, where information is power. We'll be right back. 1450 WOL. They call. Send letters, email, and visit your home. They're not friends or family. They're con artists, scammers, and criminals. In times like these, it's important to learn how to protect yourself. Credit card schemes, bogus investment opportunities, and free vacation scams are just a few ways that today's criminals target you and your family. Protect yourself. Never give anyone your social security number, credit card, or bank account information unless you initiated the call. Stay informed of current scams by contacting your Attorney General's Office and Better Business Bureau. If you're a victim, reporting the con to the local authorities will prevent others from suffering the same fate. To learn more about how to keep your family safe from con artists and scams, visit ncpc.org. That's ncpc.org. A message from the U.S. Department of Justice, National Crime Prevention Council, and the Ad Council. Is Joey home? Joey, the door! Joseph! Yeah? Hello, son. I'm Dean Rubin from college. I'm here to invite you to join us this fall. Me? Mm-hmm. Give me a day! Yeah. Well, we've reviewed your application. No, no. Give me a D. D. No. Wait. Right. You didn't actually fill out an application. I didn't think I had to. You know what? That's fine. Because your algebra grade certainly... No? Wait, you didn't actually uh, take. Well, no one told me I was supposed uh, to. Ah, whatever. You really want to go to college, and we really want to have you. Joey! 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 Out of bed! Hey, wake up. You can't dream your way into college. There are actual steps you need to take. For all the steps, visit knowhowtogo.org. Brought to you by the American Council on Education, Lumina Foundation for Education, and the Ad Council. News Talk 1450 WOL AM. Where information is power. Welcome back, everybody. Seattle Morning Show. Wake up, everybody. Y'all should all be uh, awake by this time of day. You know what? Well, look, uh, Seattle, I just want to take a minute. <laughs> he sounds so good. <laughs> yeah, I know. Wake up, everybody. <laughs> so I'm good to be up now. So what? So what? Okay, won't you get the tobacco out your mouth? <laughs> Sir, I don't even use tobacco. Tobacco. Okay, go ahead. So, um, look, let me say this. We ain't got but like thirty minutes left in the show. So, what I want to do is just, you know, talk about how excited I am to have this celebrity beauty weekend 
60 days from now, Seattle. Woohoo! Listen, I'm so excited with a big X in the middle. Big excited. Because let me tell you why. Tell, tell us. This is going to be a wonderful event. There's nothing like this coming to Washington, D.C. Other than what we're doing. And that's so wonderful. I mean, I'm so excited about it. And as you know, I handle the vendors. And I'm so excited about our vendors. One of our vendors called in this morning and was talking about tipping. That's True Diva. And they have a wonderful, wonderful product called Kick Yo A-S-H. Ash. Kick Your Ash. And it's so wonderful. I use it every, every, every day. Because I And maybe ashy. that's why I don't have any. Because yesterday I came didn't to even work. Want any. Yes, I did. And yesterday I came to work. I'm not, I'm sorry, not yesterday. But Friday I came to work and one of the students said, Mr. Bennett, your elbows are ashy. And li- how in the world are they going to tell the CEO his elbow <laughs> ashy? That's because Aunt Raiden took all the samples that they sent into the radio station. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Hey, True Diva, please send me and Mr. Bennett. Uh, please send me. Me I and I said Mr. you Bennett. already got all. Okay. But we need some more. We need some more ash kicker. Cause let me tell you something. Because I am, I'm about to kick. <laughs> Cause look, that is some good stuff. That's why I'm so excited about this symposium. That's why I'm so excited about this weekend. Yeah, and okay. I want, you better get back on track. I want all of those people out there who are listening, who are potential vendors. Look, we ain't got but so much more time left before we have to shut the doors on vendorship. So please give me a call. 202-526-1400 extension 18 and let's get into this event we have over 5,000 people that will be there we have a lineup including a certain celebrity that I'm not even going to name because it is not in my place to say anything but we working on some stuff right now and this is going to be a big awesome event and you should be in attendance look another thing let me say something real fast Sienna. I got this candle to which I love. Oh, yes. I got this candle. And I got this candle from a potential vendor. And let me tell you something. These are the best candles in the history of the world. I'm just telling you, hands down. Because they smell wonderful. They look wonderful. She shaped them like cakes, like, like banana pudding, like martini glasses. I mean, apples. Everything and they smell just like what they represent, and it's so wonderful that you don't even have to. You don't even have to light the wick. All you got to do is just open up the bag, and it just has the whole room smelling wonderful. That's the kind of stuff we're gonna have now at the Celebrity Beauty Weekend, along with you know all all of your hair care product lines and all of your uh, um, clipper clipper companies for the barbers and stylists. It's going to be an awesome event. So listen, everybody who are out there, out there listening to me right now who are potential vendors or, you know, who's guessing, you know, who thinking about whether or not they should do this, this is an opportunity of a lifetime. This is something that can take your business to a whole nother level because these are over 5,000 people who also know other, know other people. And these people can help you get to another level as far as your business is concerned. So it's time to invest in yourself. If you truly believe in your business, please invest in yourself for this particular weekend because this is going to be an awesome event. What do you think about that, Ciara? I I, I really think it's awesome. Let me just say this to our listeners who, because this may be your first time listening because you're off work today. January the 11th through the 13th, but mainly the 12th and 13th, we're doing the Celebrity Beauty Weekend in Washington, D.C., It starts off with the Celebrity Makeup Symposium. Many of you have heard about the Makeup Symposium, where we train everyday people how to do makeup. That Makeup Symposium is going to be held at the Bennett Career Institute on Saturday, and then Sunday and Monday we'll be at the Convention Center. uh, Reggie Wells, Oprah Winfrey's makeup artist for over 21 years. We have... um, Danessa Myricks, oh my gosh, she's off the chain. Michaela Warabi, the bridal guru, Tana Jackson, um, as well as two-time Emmy Award winner Kevin James Bennett. They're coming to the Bennett Career Institute to train everyday people on how to do makeup and become a certified makeup artist. 
So that is going to happen first on one side of the convention hall. Then we have a vending floor side. That's what Andre is talking about. He's in charge of that vending floor. We have companies that are coming out. Everybody from when last time we've seen Floyd Roberts. Everybody from Floyd Roberts to Black Opal in makeup, and then we have hair color. Kiss Cosmetics, one of our title sponsors, the Burmax company that's bringing Andes and Walls clippers. This is the time of the year where all of the guys and the gals can not only come out and get a free service, but also get free products and then most importantly get some free education. My God. That's wonderful. Free services, free products, free education. It's just a $10 entry fee, but once you get in there, we have Motions, who donated over 800 products. We have Saul Sheen Carson, Dark and Lovely. Everything you can think of is going to be at the Washington, D.C. Convention Center, January the 12th and 13th, a two-day event. Tickets are only $10 for one day, 15 for two days. We have over 30 educational classes. Every hour, there's a class that you can sit in on, learning how to do everything from natural hair to sanitation sterilization it's all going to be off the hook and we need you yes we do to show our vendors some great love i want you our tickets go on sale this friday and tickets officially go on sale this friday you can get your ticket online or you can come to the bennett career institute or any of the sea island <clears throat> salons and spa they're all going to have tickets for sale for our big Beauty Celebrity Weekend. We have McCray from Chicago Licious. We have Angie C. Styles from LA Hair. We have Gocha. We have Janelle Silly Smith. We have Maxwell's Barbara Vernon Scott. We have the awesome Kenny Duncan from Andy's who can do uh, designs with his eyes closed. We have Tone the Barber. The list just goes on and on of all the artists, the celebrity people that's coming out to train everyday people. If you are interested in coming out to that event, then call the Bennett Career Institute on this coming Friday because this Friday we will be selling tickets to that event. We're also going to sell them this Sunday because many of you should have called the Bennett Career Institute to get your ticket for the uh fashion show for this coming weekend See, or to make your donation. Excuse yes, me, sir. Seattle. Uh -huh. I, just, I just got to say this. I got to say this. If you're an aspiring, uh, aspiring uh, makeup artist, how could you not want to learn from somebody who has 21 years as a professional makeup artist and for one everybody. of the biggest, yeah, for one of the one of the biggest names in the history of our people, Oprah Winfrey, as, as well as you know, like you said, everybody, Oprah Winfrey, Michelle Obama, Beyonce, the list goes on and Sir, on. Everybody who's anybody. See, Alan, I was looking through our computer the other day, you know, trying to get some, you know, pictures and things together, and I happened to see a lot of pictures of Reggie Wells, of him being interviewed on the Oprah Winfrey show, of him with Shaka Khan, and you know, Whitney Houston, and a lot of people, and I was really amazed by it because I'm like, I mean, how could you not want to learn from from him? How could you not? So that I, I'm saying all that to say, if you're out there and you're trying, you're trying to do makeup, this is an opportunity to rub shoulders with one of the biggest names in the and, industry. And, and not not only rub shoulders, but you know we got to take it a little deeper than that, Andre. But we don't have a lot of time anymore. But we have to remind ourselves from last week's topic: what is holding you back from living your best life now? What is holding you back? I know that's right. You know, the the thing that I keep reminding myself is Martin Luther King book, Why Can't We Wait, is when he said, I have heard what you've done. I've heard what you said that the white folk is doing, and I've seen what they're doing. But my question, this is me paraphrasing, but my question is, what are you doing for yourself? Quit standing in your own way. Some of you know that makeup artistry is something you, some of you have been looking for a trade. Some of you have been looking for a, a second career. Some of you have been looking for something to do now that you've retired. Some of you, what the thing that's holding you back is fear. I'm 60 years old, C. Allen. What am I going to do? First of all, makeup also is a ministry. Do you know working with, you can work, you can special. Now how many people specialize in working with seasoned skin? 
I haven't heard of one. Me either. I haven't heard of one senior makeup artist out here with your sassy 60-year-old self. Wait a minute. Sassy 60, 70-year-old self. One more time. One more time. Sassy, sassy, <laughs> sassy. 60, 70-year-old Ooh, self. Who said that one? Walking around with your make, rolling your makeup kit, going into senior buildings and making the seniors look good, making them feel good. Just because you 75, 80 doesn't mean you don't want to wear a little makeup every now and then. You want to go to church looking pretty? I know that's right. And there's some pretty older women. I mean, all these older Absolutely. women look beautiful. Come out to the Celebrity Makeup Symposium. Register for the course. Get your certification. Last year, Alonzo, we had a 66-year-old lady who came from the Sea Island Morning Show who came out there. And I hope she is still doing makeup. But it's something that we can do, you know, to really just begin to just... Uh, it's about changing lives as well. You're mm -hmm. right. You're right. And this is going to be one of those type of events where somebody's going to come there and they're going to leave a different person. And I already know it because, you know, oh, right yeah. now I'm excited. And, and I, I can't wait to oh, see you it. stay excited. I, I All do. right, everybody. It's, it's break time. Listen, listen. We got to go to break, but we want you to call now during the break to my voicemail. Give us your first and last name and your phone number if you want to either register for the conference, if you are a vendor, or if you just want to do your donation for MedStar Washington Hospital Center. This is C. Allen on 1450 AM. WOL, where information is power. We'll be right back after these messages. News updates on the web at WOLDCnews.com. Good morning. This WOL traffic update is brought to you by SambaHealth.com. Northbound on 210, it's the construction in the right lane after Palmer Road. It's slowing you down briefly as you head up toward Palmer Road, northbound on 210, westbound on 450, Annapolis Road. At Enterprise Road, Glendale Boulevard, construction in the right lane, emergency road work there. A brief delay to head through that work zone. For over 65 years, Saab has been protecting federal employees, annuitants, and their families. During open enrollment, enjoy peace of mind. Choose wisely. Choose Samba at Samba Health. Dot com. Now your WOL weather forecast brought to you by Robitussin for today. Mix of clouds and sun, a high near 58 for tonight. Cloudy with showers, 37 for tomorrow. Showers ending and becoming mostly cloudy but cold, a high near 42. Control your cough with Robitussin, the number one pharmacist recommended brand for cough, cold, and flu combinations. Don't suffer the cough sequences. Steve Hershorn for News Talk 1450 WOL, where information is power. Before the bare necessities, the simple bare necessities. The bare necessities of healthy living are easier than you think. You better believe it. It all starts with the right balance of being active and eating well. You eat air? You're going to love the way they tickle. And the food pyramid shows you the way. With just the right amount of exercise and the necessary grains, vegetables, fruits, milk, and meats and beans to keep you and your family on a path to good health. Just the bare necessities of life. Just remember, every food group every day crazy start by taking small steps steps that add up to a happier healthier life try making half your grains whole or start adding fruit to breakfast me and baloo we've got things to do so eat right have a banana be active i'll move that's it and have lots of fun yeah man for your own path to a healthier you visit mypyramid.gov oh man this is really living this message brought to you by the u.s department of agriculture and the ag council News Talk 1450 WOL AM, where information is power. Yes, indeed, everyone. All right, okay, this is our last segment. We're back here. Uh, listen, when I just say that, let me just say this. I appreciate all of our listeners. I thank you so much. You know, if from two to 2,000 to 200,000, I don't care. I just thank you so much for taking time out your schedule. You didn't have to turn the radio on. And you did not have to leave the radio on. So as I as I as I talk to listeners, as I meet people, I could be anywhere in the store and they hear my voice and they say, "Are you on the radio? Are you C. Allen?" And I just appreciate all of that. You don't have to do it. I'm not one of those starstruck kind of persons. You know, I just thank God for the the opportunities and the blessings that has um, been bestowed upon me. So, just wanted to take out a second. Because you don't have to do the things that you do. I appreciate it when I saw our listeners 
at the Derek J event on last night from Real Housewives of Atlanta in the, at the Bennett Career Institute. And when I went to them, as I was checking everyone in, and they said I came because I heard you talk about it on the Sea Island Morning Show. That means a lot to me. And, yes, they had gray hair, but they hung in with the young folk, and they had a really good time. And I told you all that we were giving away a lot of free products, and their hands was just full of free products from makeup to hair products to just all kinds of things, nail products that they received by coming out to the show. Yeah, they had to give out. You know, little bags for them to put, this, you know, all of the products they gave them in. Mm-hmm. It was it was really wonderful, man. I mean, uh, TMG put together Total Media. I mean, that's right, Total, Total Media, Media Group. Group. Get it together. Yeah, they put together an awesome presentation <laughs> last night. And uh, sassy, yes, yeah, sassy. So I like them sassy now. Like, like, let me, let me talk about Miss um, Miss Miss uh, Janelle. She was looking so good last night. Yeah. All right, let's keep it professional. My God. I just want to say she was Okay, good. Janelle, is that you do. I appreciate it when I saw our listeners at the Derek J event on last night from Real Housewives of Atlanta in the, at the Bennett Career Institute. And when I went to them, as I was checking everyone in, and they said I came because I heard you talk about it on the Sea Island Morning Show. That means a lot to me. And, yes, they had gray hair, but they hung in with the young folk. And they had a really good time. And I told you all that we were giving away a lot of free products. And their hands was just full of free products from makeup to hair products to just all kinds of things, nail products that they received by coming out to the show. Yeah, they had to give out, you know, little bags for them to put, this, you know, all of the products they gave them in. Mm-hmm. It, was, it was really wonderful, man. I mean, uh, TMG put together Total Media, I mean, that's right, Total, Total Media, Media Group. Group. Get it together. Yeah, they put together an awesome presentation <laughs> last night. And, uh, sassy. Yes, yeah, sassy. So I like them sassy now. Like, like, let, me, let me talk about Miss, um, Miss, Miss uh, Janelle. She was looking so good last night. See, All right, let's keep it professional. My God. I just want to say she was Okay, good Janelle was night. looking really nice on last night. Thank you, sir. And she did a great job with the weed, with the, you know, the, just putting everything in. It was so awesome. She did a great job. Okay, but get your voice back together because you sound you scare me. Um, all right, everyone. So, listen. I think it's... <laughs> it's you sometimes. All right, everyone. So listen, I think it's important. You know, you got to keep him in line over here. He started talking about Janelle. His voice started deep, and he started slowing down. And wait a minute. In the name of Jesus, the blood. I know that's right. That he shed for me. Okay. All right, everyone. So listen, what's important is that before we get off the air, it's important that if you are available days today, start by the Bennett Career Institute. If you know a, if you have a stylist or a barber, come by the Bennecker Institute and get something for them for Christmas. Today only, Total Media Group with Real Housewife of Atlanta, Derek J. and Janelle Sealy Smith, they have products for sale. They give you a special discount if you say you heard it off the Sea Island Morning Show. The table is set up in the auditorium at the 700 Monroe Street Northeast. They have magazines. They have educational DVDs. Uh, Derek J. is there. Janelle Silly Smith is there. They're doing classes. And I think it's kind of important that if you want to, you may can't sneak in a picture. It depends on what they're doing. But you definitely want to get that wig styler if you want to know how to work. Because before, we couldn't put those flat irons to certain type of wigs because it would uh, melt the wigs and now they came out with something different and something very exciting so start by 700 Monroe Street today uh, for that also the 202-526-1400 extension 19 is for you to call and leave your name and number with you uh, and we'll call you back to get your donations if you're writing the check make it out to Med Star Washington Hospital Center this coming Sunday is the event that we're having for the breast cancer, any kind of cancer, cancer itself, for the MedStar Washington Hospital Center so we can be a blessing to them. So I need you to come out. We do an annual fundraiser every year, and it's going to be on November the 17th. So we want you to be present. We want you to be there 
also this Friday at all of the salons as well as the Ben and Career Institute your your Celebrity Beauty Weekend flyers and tickets the tickets will be on sale uh, on Friday so it is crucial that you make sure that you uh, get some of that and uh, come out January and listen this is what's happening once you come in the door there are four stages you can go to there's an area to get your hair done there's an area to get your makeup on there's an area to get nail polishes and there's an area for the guys to get their hair cut and beard trims and all of that how much they pay for all of this it's now? free once you pay your 10 to get in the door everything is free then we have a product booth it bring your cell phones because you gotta like the Sea Island Morning Show page our goal is to make sure that we get towards our 10,000 base. Right now, we're close to 5,000. By the end of the year, we want to have five, and then we want to get 10,000 at that January event, and we need you to help us do that. We want you to bring the phone, and once you like the page, we're going to give you some free products. So we have a booth with nothing but free products that we're giving away to all of the people, and then we're going to have some music entertainment. So you owe it to yourself. In January, start the new year off with a new look. Some of you that may be interested in makeup artistry, you want to take the symposium. The symposium is half price. It's half off. You need to call the 202-526-1400. And listen, when you call, because some of the listeners be calling, and they don't know what they're talking about. They say, well, see, Alan said the sun was, <laughs> sun was shaving and moving in and all kinds of stuff. Listen, if you are making a donation, Leave a message. I'm calling for Washington Hospital Center or Cancer Institute. Okay? If you're calling for the Makeup Symposium, say Makeup Symposium. If you call them because you want to be a vendor, just say vendor. Or if you just want tickets or more information, just say ticket or more information. Okay? So know what you're saying when you call. Some of y'all get so excited and you call. And then it take me forever to get back in touch with you, and you're I'm all excited. over the place. I'm excited right now. And you ought to be. I'm excited right now. It's nothing like what's going to happen in January. And I'm right smack dab in the middle of it. It's going to be a wonderful event. And I want all of my vendors, like I said one more time, just want to reiterate all my vendors that are, number one, that are already there. We love you. We appreciate you. We're glad that you're going to share this event and make this event a really big one, but we also want to invite, you know, a few more vendors out who are interested in making a difference for their business and are interested in being part of this historic event. Uh, once again, 202-526-1400 extension 18. I can't wait to hear from you this evening or, you know, this, this coming up. Cause like I said, we don't have so much time left. So, uh, it'd be nice to hear from you all today. Okay, everyone. So listen, we only have about two minutes left. What I want you to do, everyone, is let me just kind of think. I just want you to kind of think for a second. What is holding you back from living your best life? I saw this weekend 12 Years of a Slave. The movie touched my heart. People said it was going to be emotional. They said you was going to cry and all of that. I did not cry. But it was such a reality check. All of my listeners, just like I told you to go out and see Things Never Said, I'm telling you, go out and see 12 Years a Slave. I want you to see that not because of the graphic nature, but I want you to see that so it can evoke conversation. Let me say that again. I want you to go to the movies to see 12 Years of a Slave, not because of the graphic nature, but we want you to go to the movies so it can evoke conversation. See, Alan, you mind if I um, go to the movies today? Um, as long as you know you're off the clock. Well, I got to be off the clock. Now, my job it's assignment. important for you to go see that movie because it will evoke conversation, not only about our race, but just about the way things used to be. Because it is a movie that is, it is a true story. 
Mm. And you need to take time out to go and see the movie so you can now and take someone, take a youth with you. Because oftentimes, if they knew what we had to go through, if they knew what our ancestors went through, then they would maybe have a change of heart when it comes to their pants sagging or being disrespectful to each other or just not having any kind of sense. Uh -oh, you need to come. take a teenager with you to see 12 years of a slave. So we can understand that our life, our liberties, our freedom, our justice is sometimes just taken away from us at a drop of a dime. Don't take much. And let me tell you something. Even though that movie was back in the 1800s, we still have slaves walking around every day. You better know it. We still have slave masters walking around every day. So what I want you to understand is if you don't do anything else, go to the movies. If you're off of work today, go to the movies and see 12 Years of a Slave. Yeah, I'm going. So it can change your perspective and your situation. My time is up, everybody. This is C. Allen from the C. Allen Morning Show. I want to thank you for listening for all of our new callers. You can listen even at work. You go to www.calanmorningshow.com. Click Listen Live. Put in your headset and hear me every Monday from 10 until noon. If you're on Twitter, it's at the C. Allen Morning. T-H-E-C-A-L-A-N Morning. If you're on Facebook, we want you to you want you to go ahead and follow us on Facebook at C A L A N Morning Show dot com or the C Allen Morning Show dot com on Facebook. You'll be able to follow us. My Instagram, Chet C H E T Beauty King Bennett. That is my Instagram and that is my Facebook page where you can also keep in touch with me. If you have show ideas then you can you can also email us at that at those emails. My time is up everybody. Andre, it was a pleasure. As we had, always. We as had always. a long weekend and we made it here today good and strong. All right everyone, my time is up. I want you to call us our last minute call us 202-526-1400 extension 19. Remember pamper yourself. It's your duty. Why? Because you are worth it. Have a good week everyone. 1450 W O L. Peekaboo, peekaboo, smile, smile, buddy. Come on, smile. Oh, honey, he's still not smiling. Maybe he's not a smiler. <sighs> yeah, maybe he's just not a happy baby. Maybe he's just being a boy. You know how boys are. Or maybe he's teething. Oh, poor baby. I think his gums hurt. Maybe he's just tired. Or maybe his tummy hurts. He didn't eat that much. Maybe he's not ticklish. You think maybe he's scared of the dog? Maybe he'll outgrow it. Maybe it's a phase. Maybe he just doesn't like smiling. Maybe he has autism, and we can definitely do something to help. Maybe is all you need to find out more about autism. No big, joyful smiles by six months is one early sign. Learn the others at AutismSpeaks.org slash signs or see a doctor today for an autism screening. The sooner it's diagnosed, the better. And it can make a lifetime of difference. Brought to you by Autism Speaks and the Ad Council. Do you dance badly or hug in public? That's okay. You don't have to be perfect to be the perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care would love to put up with you. Call 1-888-200-4005 or visit AdoptUsKids.org for more information. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt Us Kids, and the Ad Council. The traditional light bulb, a groundbreaking invention in 1879. It's time we switch to longer-lasting Energy Star light bulbs. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at EnergySavers.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Energy and the Ad Council. They say America is a land of opportunity. But for some of us, it's not so easy. Today, one out of every six children in America lives in poverty. Where every day is hard. And there's never enough. But we don't want a handout. We want a way out. This is America. Together, we can do so much. Will you help? 
Nearly 13 million children live in poverty. Make a difference. Go to PovertyUSA.org and get involved. A message from the Catholic Campaign for Human Development. President Obama loves WOL, where information is power. So in love. WOL, where information is power. President Obama loves WOL, where information is power. So in love. W-O-L, where information is power. Our lives are affected every day by innovations from the minds of African Americans. Support the United Negro College Fund because a mind is a terrible thing to waste. Visit uncf.org or call 1-800-332-UNCF. Brought to you by UNCF and the Ad Council. African Americans are nearly twice as likely to suffer a stroke as white Americans. There are steps you can take to help beat the odds. 1-888-4-STROKE or go to strokeassociation.org. Join the power to end stroke. Brought to you by the American Stroke Association and the Ad Council. 1450 WOL Washington, D.C. and WPRS HD2 Waldorf, Washington. A Radio 1 station and worldwide at WOLDCnews.com. The views and opinions of the following show do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of News Talk 1450 WOL, Radio 1 Incorporated, or their management. Good day. Welcome to the Georgette Miller Show. It's Money Monday on 1450 WOL. Good morning. Well, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. It's Georgette Miller, and this is the Georgette Miller Show. Hello. Are you tired of All right, guys. Happy Veterans Day for those of you who do that work that you do. We all are here to say thank you, and that's heartfelt. I like to say, and I say this a lot at um, a lot of my seminars, I don't have much regrets. I've always lived my life the way I've wanted to live it, doing what it is I wanted to do, how I wanted to do it, with the exception of I wanted to join the Air Force. And guess what? I got out of law school and had all this student loan debt and said, well, I'm going to go to a law firm and help me pay back some of that debt. So I didn't join the Air Force. And when I finally got the nerve and the time to do it, it was right at my 35th birthday. And so when I went to sign up, they told me, (laughs) you're too late. So for those of you who are actually in the Air Force and other parts of the armed services, you're actually living out my dream. And it was the one dream I was not able to actualize. So on this day, we take this day to say thank you. And so I'm here telling you and saying to you a heartfelt thank you for what it is that you do. All right, a little bit of advertising. Living debt free, what credit score fear mongers and debt peddlers don't want you to know. You can get a copy of that book written by me. It's available on Amazon.com. The Kindle version is also available on Amazon.com, and you can get a copy at Barnes & Nobles. If you want to follow us on Twitter or on Facebook, go to my website at GeorgetteMiller.com. That's GeorgetteMiller.com. And if you are interested in having a free consultation with me or one of my attorneys, you can always get us at one 866 96 GM Law. That's one eight six six nine six four six five two nine. Now, based on the fact that today is Veterans Day, well, wait a minute. Here's the number you can reach us at right now if you want to join in in the conversation. If you have questions, call in now at one eight hundred four five zero seven eight seven six. That's one eight hundred four five zero seven eight seven six. Georgette is here to take your questions. All right, guys, based on the fact that today is Veterans Day, I was driving in and I was about to talk about, you know, whether how you go about the strategies that are available to you if you wanted to save your home or get out of debt and all that good stuff. But what I want to talk about, at least for a little bit, is the fact that those that are enrolled or who are, yes, who are currently serving in our military armed forces you have what we call a super priority. Under the bankruptcy code, 
There is something called the means test that us non-military folks have to qualify for or have to prove to the court to show them that we're really, really broke and can file bankruptcy. If you're a military personnel, even if you've served in the military and you're now out and retired, as long as you've served in the military going back to the early 90s, I think is the first Gulf War, you can go into bankruptcy court outright. And you don't have to prove to the court that you're broke, broke by filing out this means test crap. You actually can just walk into bankruptcy court, tell them I'm broke, don't have to prove anything else, unlike us regular folks, and you have the right to file bankruptcy of right. So I have an office in New Jersey, and I actually get a lot of military clients out of the Air Force bases in North Jersey, and some of the most heartbreaking and rewarding telephone calls that I've gotten in the past is I've actually had people who are currently serving in, in Afghanistan, serving in Iraq, who were actually heard our pro broadcast and was calling to set up an appointment for when they came back stateside. So if you're in the military, if you're you know serving in whatever branch of the armed forces and you find that you're in over your head or you were deployed and when you came back, you came back to all these credit card bills and you and your family really can't catch up, don't sit there. I mean, you have a super right. We all have rights to file bankruptcy, but you definitely, and it's written in the code, you definitely have the right to file and should do so, okay? Now, for those of you who, many of you this week talked about, Ms. Miller, I'm saving my home, or I'm losing my home, what can I do? That was question number one, the main question on my Facebook page this week. The next question was, Ms. Miller, after I file bankruptcy, what can I do? Am I banished to the land of nowhere for seven to ten years? So I'm going to take both of those questions one at a time. If you're losing your home, especially for those of you, I heard that there is this crazy thing that's going on in D.C. especially where you guys have your homes are being lost due to past tax debt past real estate tax or past unpaid real estate taxes. So the state is coming in or the city is coming in and exercising its right to basically sell your home for your unpaid taxes. What can you do? As long as your house has not been sold, you have the right to file what's called a Chapter 13 bankruptcy to basically catch up on your unpaid taxes or catch up on your unpaid mortgage payments. What does that mean? Okay, you owe $10,000 in real estate taxes. You can't come up with the $10,000 right now. Your house is going to be sold Friday of this week. You have up until that gavel comes down on Friday to file what we call an emergency petition, where we just put the mere skeleton petition for a Chapter 13 into the bankruptcy court. And as long as we do that and you receive a case number, which happens instantaneously, your house cannot be sold. But what? Okay, that is just step one. So you've stopped the sheriff's sale. And you can do that even if your house is about to be foreclosed Friday at 10 o'clock of this week. As long as you have a, you have a bankruptcy case number Friday 959 of this week, your house cannot be sold. So you've stopped the sheriff's sale. What are your obligations now? Your obligations now is to do what? Over the next five years, catch up on the tax payments or mortgage payments you're, you were falling behind on. So if you were behind $10,000 in real estate taxes, you now have five years to catch up on that $10,000. But in the meantime, you have to car pay your current tax payments. So now you have two payments. You have the current tax year after filing the bankruptcy that you have to stay current on, and you have five years to catch up on the tax payments you fall behind. Now, this may feel like a lot of math, but it's not. Basically, five years to catch up on the tax payments you fell behind, and you have, going forward, you have to stay current on your current tax payments. Same thing with the mortgage. You're behind $10,000 on your mortgage payment. What do you do? 
you file your Chapter 13, be it an emergency or a full petition, and the bankruptcy court says, okay, you can keep this house, but you have to do two things. You have to go back to paying the regular mortgage payment, whatever that is. And the $10,000 that you're behind, we, the bankruptcy court, is going to give you five years to pay it out or off. And the bank has nothing to say in this deal as long as you do these two things. Pay your current mortgage payments going forward or use five years and use the five years to catch up on the mortgage payments that you're behind. Okay, so that's scenario one. What about that situation where you're two, three years behind on your mortgage payment and you truly cannot afford it? So you can't afford this home. What do you do? This is America. Nobody lives in their home for free. You can't live anywhere for free. So you can't afford to pay the current mortgage payment. You haven't paid it in a year or two. You can't afford to pay it going forward. What do you do? you file what we call a chapter seven bankruptcy and what you do is you're basically telling the bankruptcy court and the bank that you are no longer going to make any more payments so you're going to surrender the property under a chapter seven bankruptcy you're basically turning the house back over to the bank right but the bank still has to legally foreclose and take that home from you so in the land records, there is still a deed on the land records saying that you are the legal title owner of that property. So unless and until the bank foreclose, they can't tell you to leave. So what do you do? You stay. But during that period when you're not making a mortgage payment, what did I start out saying? This is America. Nobody lives anywhere for free. So during the period that you're in the home, and you're not making a mortgage payment to the bank because you're no longer legally obligated to make a mortgage payment to the bank because you filed a Chapter 7 bankruptcy, you still make a mortgage payment. It's just that now you're making the mortgage payment to yourself. So if all you could afford was $1,000 a month or $2,000 a month, however, your mortgage payment is three and $4,000 a month, and there's no way you can pay that, you still pay the $2,000 a month in mortgage payment. Now you're paying it to yourself. Year one, you get a, you, you open, you put it on your mattress, you put it in a cash till, you put it in your bank account. I don't care where you put it. Just that you put that money somewhere. Because year one, you will have 24000 Year two, you have 48000 Year three, you have 72, year four, you have 96 or 98, year five, you have 120,000. So if the bank forecloses in year three, you hand them the keys, but you walk out of the house with $72,000. Look, listen, what do I say every week? In the abundance of water, only the fool is thirsty. So if you follow chapter seven and you surrender the property, and in year one, year two, year three, or whatever year, the bank finally gets around to foreclosing on your property, and you walk out of that house and you have no money, shame on you. Shame on you, because what? This is America. Nobody lives anywhere for free. So what you want to do is during that period, you want to pack away, stash away, put away as much money as you possibly can. So that when you do leave the house, you have enough money to possibly go buy another home. I have had clients who were able to save up over $100,000. So they move to Florida and they buy something cash. Or they move to Atlanta and Georgia and they buy something cash. Or they move to Phoenix, Arizona or a house in Arizona and they buy something cash. Or, Nevada, or wherever. But you will have enough money to, one, start over. Put down on another house. And if you really go gangster you may have enough money to buy another house cash. So what I get on the air and talk to you guys about is basically strategies for you getting a new or a fresh financial start, all of which you are entitled to under the bankruptcy code. So my question to you guys is, if you have this right, why aren't you using it? 
And that's the question I always I pose every week on every radio station that I get on. And there are a few of them. If you have this right, why aren't you using it? And that rolls into the second question I generally get on my Facebook page, which is, Ms. Miller, I or they and them said, or my neighbor says, or my real estate broker says, and, or this person says, if I file bankruptcy, I will not be able to do anything for five to seven years. Okay, let's go through this. And again, if you want to join in on the conversation here, I know quite a few of you, you send me Facebook posts and you call me in the office, all of which I'm grateful for. But if you have a question here, more than likely there are hundreds, maybe even thousands of people who have the same question. So go ahead, call me on the air. I promise I won't give your name on the air. Here's the number. Call us now. Call us now. Call in now at 1-800-450-7876. That's 1-800-450-7876. Georgette is here to take your questions. Okay, so many of you, like this is always the second highest question that I have on my Facebook page or on Twitter. What happens after I file bankruptcy? I'm told I will not be able to do anything. First of all, you qualify for an FHA mortgage two years later. And actually, earlier this year, there was a law that was passed and enacted by, the, by HUD, which now states, in order to help so many people who have filed bankruptcy, because you've got to understand, 1.4 million people file bankruptcy every year. So HUD uh, amended their reg regulations so that you could actually f get an FHA mortgage now, a year after filing bankruptcy. So you could literally file bankruptcy today and qualify for an FHA mortgage a year later. Also, let's think about it. You all think that your FICO score, I don't know why everybody's so obsessed with their FICO score, but here is how it works. Your FICO score is based on your debt to income ratio, right? Before bankruptcy, what do you have? You have your income and you have your debts. After bankruptcy, what happens? You still have your income, but what happens to your debts? Right, they're discharged. They're now gone. So now what does your debt to income ratio look like? Exactly. That's why your credit score actually goes up after filing bankruptcy, in some instances 100 to 180 points, because now all your creditors are listed as zero. And if you do the metrics, you have income, but now you have no debt. What does that mean? That means that someone in your position can actually take on debt. And banks are not stupid. They know that you, can no long, you can't file bankruptcy for not, not another eight years, yet you have disposable income because you still have a job and you still have income. So within 30 days of filing bankruptcy, you get all of my clients, get all these crazy credit card applications, and they get all these credit crazy applications to come and finance cars. And they're asking you to come and finance cars because now your credit they know is great. You have income, but you don't have any debt. So you have the ability to take on debt. But what happens? If you take on this new debt, you just got got. Because once you take on the new debt, you can't file again for eight years. So... I'm here to basically educate you guys. Basically say to you, you have all these options. Why aren't you using them? You have all these strategies that you can use to get a better financial future. Why aren't you using them? Another question that I get all the time is loan modifications. Exactly what is a loan modification and how does it work? A lot of my clients who file Chapter 7s and they surrender the property, they will actually go, black, go back and apply for a loan modification, and they have a higher degree of getting a better resolution for them. They have a higher percentage of actually getting it. Why? When you file a Chapter 7, the bank knows, and you know that you are not going to pay them any more money. 
And the bank also know that they can't tell you to leave until they legally foreclose. So here are their options. You sit there and stash your cash, or they give you a modification so that you can actually pay them more money, pay them money so that their loan can be moved from a non-performing loan to a performing loan based on a loan modification. That's why.